It's the Bennington Show on a Monday. <laughs> Gail and I were just screaming that song in Jen's ears as she passively just put up with it. Just like, uh, I'm just huh? trying to work. She, uh, she had huh? a face like, this is part of the job, I guess. Yeah, it's all part of it. You know, it's not the best part of it, but it's still part of it. As long as they have a good show, I don't care how loud they sing it. <laughs> that was Jen's first time hearing that song, too. Really? That was your first time hearing I never heard of Aretha Franklin. <clears throat> I said, you you know Aretha Franklin. She was like, was was she the one with the kite and the key? And I'm like, that's Ben Franklin. <laughs> He's good, too, but in another different way. <laughs> All right, it's the uh, Bennington Show on a Wednesday. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. I'm Ron Bennington. Hmm. Uh, I started that off with a little Brill Building stuff. Great Carol King wrote that song. And Brill Building, GPS New York City premieres Saturday, 6 p.m. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. 6 p.m. in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> uh, 3 p.m. on Deep Tracks. It's a good one. There's some great writers that come out of there. And many of them we had no chance to get to. That's how many great writers there are. I know. We skipped a couple. We si- skipped a couple great ones, but there were there were too many. Yeah, it's too much. Sorry. Maybe there'll be a part two one day. I don't know. Yeah. We try okay. so hard, though. We try so hard, and Connor's like, you didn't even get the most of it. <laughs> <laughs> he always has a way to just kind of make us feel a little bit bad at the end. I feel a lot bad when it's over. <laughs> Every GPS is like a failure to me. Because <laughs> you make me feel. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. That's very, very cool. You got an eyelash there? Yeah. Do you see something in my oh, eyeball? So, my eyes are so bad. There's no way to see it. I, I don't have good enough eyes to tell. Okay. Flush it. I always just say flush it. Uh, all right. Vito, do you have like tiny little water bottles uh, <laughs> that we squirt stuff into our eyes to clear ourselves? Or You don't have an eye wash like station? Lab talk? Well, that's, <laughs> that's what every lab should have a fucking eye uh, wash station. We all should learn that in shop class. Or biology or wherever they have eye wash stations. We had an eye wash station, but we've never, I don't even think we ever got to even play with any chemicals worth washing. Yeah. Like, I never think we were ever messing with anything that serious. A friend of mine came up with DDT during a lab that we had. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> you're really good at this. <laughs> you should stick with this, you know? Uh, I think there's a trade school if you're really, really good at mixing chemicals. I'm not sure. <laughs> Debray, I think, is the name of it. All right, now you're starting to freak me out. Now I feel like my eyes itching. <laughs> my God, it itches so bad. You don't help me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Dude, I was with a friend of mine one time, and I watched a bug fly directly into his eye, and he was like, ugh. And I look over, and it was like pieces of wing and little legs <laughs> on his eye. And I just fucking screamed like I was in a horror movie. I just let out a fucking scream. It was like when Gertie went face to face with E.T., I think. That's the best way of putting it. Well, there's nothing you can do at that point. You make me feel. Who's that cool dude with Jack? I don't know. I like his hat, though. I like everything about him. You know what I mean? I think I just found someone to single white female on. Did you see the girl who just walked by? Yeah, she's she, great. She and I just got locked in the bathroom together. We had to figure out there was like a weird, like the doorknob completely like was broken and we were trying to go crazy in there. What? I walked out of the men's bathroom and I heard fucking uh, rattling on the door and I just thought somebody was working on it. You could have saved us. We were it was, we, two women. Trapped together. I just assumed it was. I just assumed it was like they were doing maintenance on the door. I didn't think that there was people stuck in the bathroom. You're one of those people. He sees something and he doesn't say something. That's true. He sees something. He says nothing. I'm just gonna give a quick uh, throwback Thursday story. So when I was a little kid, we were up in Canada uh, for one of our fishing vacations, and there were these rest area that we stopped to have picnics at. And uh, they had the old-fashioned kind of outhouses there, right? And there would be like a latch up top, like you had to take a latch. So this is also weird. My cousin, my two cousins went into the outhouse together, right? We were so little, one was a boy and one was a girl. 
right? So they're in the outhouse. It's fucking pitch black. And I guess they latched themselves in. And then found out immediately when they were fucking done peeing, they couldn't find the latch. And they both started beating on the door and screaming. And everybody in the rest area was just staring. And there was no talking to them. Like, they were just in a blind panic (laughs) and, and fucking beating on it, right? And my uncle went back and got like this long knife and just kept going until he fucking pulled the thing up but what's funny is like they both just came walking out of there like okay good it's good to be outside <laughs> like immediately shook it off and that that they were just in a death spiral scream thing <laughs> and all, all the other fucking people like my family was like oh good all right here's a sandwich and we just saw the other people they're just like did we see a rape take place <laughs> We couldn't have felt more fucking low rent than I think at that moment. And it took a uh, it took a while for us to laugh about it because we kind of felt like they put a stain on our family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like oh somehow, God, so nuts. We, yes, by just showing we don't know how to act when something comes up, they lessened us as a family. You're like that family where the kids got stuck in the elevator and just started freaking out in the hotel. <laughs> yes, that family was fucking pure WTS. Um. All right, uh, coming up, we'll be dishing today with a very special guest that everybody will be excited. To, I'm looking uh, forward to, to this hear. surprise guest. Yeah, everybody's going to go buck wild when this guest is. <laughs> I'm going to be screaming like I was locked in an outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking funny. And I'm just like, why don't you leave the door open when you pee? That's what I do. <laughs> That's the way I keep this from happening. So what? Let the... Dear God. Yeah. You want to see my dick? Take a gander. <laughs> but I'm not locking myself in here. <laughs> All right, now this story is just goes to show that we do live in the future. Barbara Streisand has cloned her dead dog with two new pups. She didn't even just get one new clone. No, she She got got two. two. (laughs) Yeah, and I guess the humane society is pissed at her. Yeah. uh, Well, look, people don't even really like when you go to a breeder. Let alone, you know, like if you're not getting a rescue dog, there's a lot of dogs out there that need. Why is there three? Well, one of them is just uh, in a like a she regular bought dog. that dog, a regular dog. <laughs> so she wanted a third dog, even though she had two clones. The uh, now you see these kind of like sweet dogs. We just saw somebody in the lobby with one. Yeah. The other night at the stand, uh, Nikki comes on stage and she has a bag with her dog in it. it on the stage. On stage and just worked. <laughs> it was very fucking funny. I mean. Uh, I'm going to be honest, as a dog lover, I'd find that distracting because I know I would just be staring at that dog. I know. I was like, she should be doing more stuff on the dog. Like, she brought it up like, yeah, I know. I brought a dog up here. I wanted to walk tonight with him. And uh, and then that was it. Then she went into material. And I'm like, look at that dog. <laughs> and I actually even said this later. Like, I was just like acting like, was what was the dog thinking? Like, oh, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> We've got this crowd. <laughs> Because it was as well behaved. That little dog just sat there with its head out, <laughs> looking at a fucking hundred people staring at her. And I was wondering, even like, if she thought she was being talked about the whole time. Now, would you clone a pet, or do you think that that is immoral? Well, I had an aunt who she had this dog, Heidi Ho, right? <laughs> I think it was like back then I called it a hot dog, but I think it's Beagle. Or something like that. You know those long fucking... A, do- sh- a dachshund? Maybe it was a dachshund. I don't know. I don't know all the fucking weird dog breeds. But it wasn't even a dog that I liked. So when Heidi Ho died, she just got the exact same dog, right? Same breed? Same breed, same look. I mean, it looked 100% the name. And named it Heidi Ho. <laughs> and she did that a couple times during the course of my lifetime. <laughs> So, again, low-rent breeding, low-rent fucking cloning, but I could see that people just want to act like, this is my this is my dog. dog. We have a long history. Now, I get, because people do get into, like, getting the same breed over and over. 
But my dog is a very unique mix. She's right. a mutt of a lot of things. And she has a very unique look. Sometimes there's dogs that look kind of similar to her. But no dog looks exactly like her. And so I I have had this feeling before where I'm just like, I just want to make sure that I ha- make another one of these. <laughs> like, I just want to keep making them. Yeah, I understand. And then just have, like, I don't. I don't know. Would I name her Birdie Jr.? I don't know. But I don't know. Here's the problem you're going to have. She would get her own identity. One of the best things about your dog is that expression, that I don't give a fuck expression. I know. And like, She's the saddest eyes. Yeah, you don't want a dog that's going to be like almost like her. Yeah, that that would be really weird. Is like the dog would look like her. Plus, they wouldn't have her little signature scar on her nose. And that would be weird if I just like cut the puppy. Like, I don't think I this think is- it though. <laughs> <laughs> little diamond shape right on the top of the nose. But why are, are we really living in the age where you just clone things now? I get, I guess so. Yeah, it's Jurassic Park time. Then let's fucking face it. Because it's like we don't talk about the fact that we've had the ability for a while. I feel like Dolly was a big deal like twenty five years oh, ago. Yeah, Dolly the sheep, Dolly. and then we never really did much, and now. Like what? What else has been closed? Uh, somebody Ivanka Trump. I don't think is the same Ivanka <laughs> Trump you started with. I ran in here running about monkey clones one day, and I thought that was going to be the next. Like I thought we were making advances, but this makes it look like all oh, that's easy. Well, yeah, if, if someone could just purchase it, just a regular yeah. citizen, yes. And the monkey clones seem like a big deal. It just doesn't seem as big of a deal anymore. No, well, you were the only one who thought it was a big deal that day. I think you're a you monkey remember. clone. Ouch! <laughs> Ouch! He's more of a monkey clown. Here's the deal. I did uh, Nick's show last night. Hilarious. How's too, Nick? He's too funny. Well, he t- taken some kind of medicine that day. What's like a medicine if you've got like an antihistamine or? Like that's exactly a... what it was. Right. Were you listening? I was not listening. Thank God, because he was all over you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's what was he saying? Uh, cause I said, I don't know, his producer didn't have something ready and my producer, I said something like my producer has always got prepared and he goes for what a heart attack. And then he just went into a lot of fat shaming stuff. Oh God. It's 2018. Nick DiPaolo. Fat shaming should not be allowed. Any longer. It's allowed. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there was no, hanging on to that one. I have to be he an advocate for it. He didn't take a, uh, a single negative call. <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, he likes to self-medicate with a little bit of rumsky. Okay. But he was so fucking funny. And I was, like, listening before, and it's like, he's much better at radio than he thinks. It was just him talking to himself and just fucking getting so pissed over, you know, the fucking news. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, and then Bonnie McFarlane came in. It was Ronnie and Bonnie's show. And that was really fun until her and Nick chested up with each other. And why are they going at I it? I guess they both want to run the prison. I don't know what's what with those two. I was sitting in between them, and quite frankly, I had a set of nerves because I adore both of them. I think, like, he called her, I don't know, like a typical woman liberal or some shit. Yeah. I don't know what it was. And then after that, he brought up Pete and Horace. And she goes, I never, you know, it's not my cup of tea. I'm like, well, did you see Nick on there? Go, no. I don't see that. You act? Are you an actor? And that fucking set him off. Because, you know, <laughs> right. he's a great actor. No, is she about doing it. that on purpose? You think, I you think can't she was... tell. <laughs> I would not play cards with Bonnie. You know what I mean? And he's like, oh, maybe you've heard of the Louis show. Maybe you've heard of Amy Schumer with the 12 Angry Men thing. And she goes, no, I didn't get a chance to say it. Was it good? And I'm like, here we fucking go. <laughs> It's Thanksgiving all over again. Yeah. The family's fighting. Middle child. But they were totally okay with it. They don't give a fuck. Right. That's you know? how they play. I guess. I mean, they're both hysterical. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this thing, though, and this uh, annoys me. There's some club that she played. I think it's called the Funny Stop in Akron. Look it up. You're not going to fuck him. This is going to set you off, Gail. Because you are everything that he accused Bonnie of being. I know. And then I said, I don't even think Bonnie's, you know, yeah, I a feminist. And that made her a little pissed at me. <laughs> and I go, you know what? I'm going to backtrack here. I'm going to stay out of this. Why are you just getting pictures? Go to the fucking <laughs> club thing. I don't want to see every comic she's <laughs> ever been there. Like, okay, so it's got a brick wall. All right. So there it is now appearing. Just go up so I can read. Um, They put 
aka Mrs. Rich Voss. Oh boy. No, Why? she never has gone anywhere as Mrs. Mrs. Rich Voss. Oh my god. No, that's not necessary. Come on. It's, yeah, that yeah. That's not even like how she does her act or anything. It starts off, do you like comedian Rich Voss? <laughs> Unbelievable, right? Well then, it is likely that you'll like this headliner. Oh my god. And you know, like even when they work in New York, one after another, they don't mention that they're married. You know what I mean? They're yeah. each yeah. you know, they're single acts, except for when they do their podcasts. But then look who's here this week. Fucking Farley's brother. It looks like they just go out of their way. <laughs> to get relatives of people. <laughs> they're not I think paying, I could get booked. They're not, they're, not, yeah, that's funny. they're not paying the full freight. <laughs> Johnny Carson's nephew was there three weeks ago. <laughs> uh, 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 um. Hey, um, it's our friend Laurie and Yonkers. Hi, everybody. Hi, Laurie. Laurie. I to, um, by the way, let me just say dog. this. Yeah, before you get to that, let me just say, I enjoy my book every day. I go and look through it because it's a picture yeah. book. Nice. You know, it's a picture book. All right, you know, know about this dog really thing? Well picking out picture books for people, except usually it's picture books for children. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, kinda, you know what? That's my thing. <laughs> I try to keep my the child in me alive. You know, you know, looking at art is a good way to do it, and I cannot good. wait to take the baby to a museum. Like we haven't done it yet. Um, where it's it's on our list of things to do. She's like old enough now that she'll get a kick out of it. I feel the same way about Chris Stanley. I feel like he's gonna I'll be able to take him. Into a museum and got some because I'd taken him once was about eight years ago. Yeah, and he was just crying and laying on the floor and kicking his feet. So I'm <laughs> like, you know what, buddy? Let's just go out for ice cream. One, once I took you my know, little I cousins think they have those, to the like, MoMA, like nights, but they stay open late, yeah. and um, <laughs> you can go like to after hours where it's like you know fun lights and things. I think they do that at, like the Guggenheim. Yeah, like evenings, one night a week. You know, you could take them to like the one that they intend for the teens. Yeah, you could take them to sleep. <laughs> Maybe that over. would be more speed. I'll take them like when you take a blanket and a pillow and sleep there that night. I you know something about this dog cloning, right? Yeah, there was a. Well, first of all, I have two dogs. Uh, you know, in succession from the same breed. Yeah. Totally different personalities, but people mistake one for the other because they think we just still have the same dog for the past twenty five years. Because they look so similar. You just but, want to um, admit that you're talking about Larry right now, and then nobody. You know, I know that that's illegal, but I'm talking about Larry's dog. Like yeah. I'm not responsible for the behavior of the first dog. He had that dog when he was 17. We raised the most recent dog together. Different personalities. But uh, there's a story about someone cloning a pet on This American Life about I don't know, like eight, ten years ago. It was this guy from Texas with a Brahma bull that he a loved. bull. Yeah. A bull. This family raised bulls, and they, he had a bull with a particular personality that he really loved. So he had the bull cloned um, after the bull died. And guess what? The clone was nothing like the original. He looked physically exactly to the hair, like every little bristle, every little everything yeah. of the, you know, the, you know, the source of the DNA. Right. Totally different personalities. So it's Barbara Band is going through all this trouble to make yeah. physical identical dogs but you don't know if they're gonna be the same counterparts you watch it yeah they're not gonna have the same qualities yeah. other than the physical qualities you know like maybe with dogs it's a little different because they're a little more adaptable to like human um nurturing you yeah. know than like a bull <laughs> yeah they're not all like fun and cuddly I mean, the thing but, about bulls, um, they're just going to run at you as soon as they get a chance. I never even see a <laughs> no, bull until so the matadors the work them over a little bit before I get there. And was almost like a family pet, you know? All right, so, thank- I mean, she's going through all this trouble to get something physically identical, but she's not going to get, like, her dog back, you know? Anyway. All right, thanks, darling. You know what uh, Barbara Streisand named that dog? What? <laughs> she named the dog with one more look at you. I could overcome the anger that I learned to know. Watch closely now. You're I right, think Fina? she did like name one of her dogs Fanny Bryce or something. Oh, though. That's adorable. <laughs> that's adorable. 
Chris is in the other room, and I'm just letting him tap on his phone and enjoy his pri- uh, privacy. Yeah, he he told me he needed to be on the other uh, in the other room to lock something down with a very famous director, producer, comedian. <laughs> this is him in his natural habitat, able to tap freely the way tap, he tap, wants. Tap, 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 tap. Dude, I said, look, as long as you're going in the other room. Put on your tap shoes. And just sit there and fucking dance on your phone. <laughs> Hello, my baby. Hello, my baby. Hello, my baby. Hello. You're the best, Chris. You're the best around. around. Chris. You know what, Chris? I wish I would have stood up a little more to Nick DiPaolo when he was talking about saying. And then when I was saying something, he was like, look, I'm worried about him. Really? Remember how many people have said that they're worried, so including many. your own boss? And Nick doesn't want you to go to Austin. That's bullshit. I'm going to Austin. I don't want to bury you there. You're not going to bury me there, man. I'm gonna, I, it's my, That's I, too far from Wounded oh. Knee, where I plan on burying you. <laughs> I thrive there. I mean, sure. so many people were saying that they were worried about him. Yeah. I mean, fucking Larry's for traffic at one time. <laughs> That's bullshit, dude. That's one of my funniest moments. Why did everybody worry about him there? Was it just an explosion of weight? or Just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as, as, as his doctor put it, he's hideously fat. <laughs> he never said that, did he, Chris? Pit doc uh, said oh, those words yeah. to me. That's he, right. He's on my shit list now. Hideously overweight. Shizer list, you fucking rip off ours. <laughs> I'm going to Texas. <laughs> That's the part about that comment. Is a doctor used the term hideous, which is not a medical term. No, it's like, morbid. Yeah, but he said hideously overweight. Oh. He's adorable. <laughs> You're the best around. Nothing's ever going to keep you down. Let me just grab another one of these stories because we need. All right, Dick's Sporting Goods. Let me just t- take a second to say <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're no longer going to sell weapons of war, they said. Um, they're getting rid of their AR 15s. They're tanks, bazookas, and um, poisonous gases. <laughs> you won't be able to get next to your football cleats so, and tees. <laughs> so they don't see those as sports anymore. No. Yeah, they decided it's no longer sport. All assault-style weapons after the Parkland, Florida school shooting. And here's the thing. The school shooter... Bought a gun there, right? Yeah. But he didn't use their gun. But I think they all just went, fuck. Yeah. What if that was our gun? He, the one that was, was a, uh, um, some kind of, um, a local like gun a private shop. Yeah, like seller. a mom and pop yeah. gun shop. And they shut down immediately. They didn't want to fucking talk about it. I don't know whether they're ever going to open back up again. But when it happens. So, um, you know. I know a lot of people are worried about this, but I have close to 600 uh, bum stocks that I need to get rid of. <laughs> and I'm willing to sell them at 20% above normal retail <laughs> because they're going to, these are, you know, and let me tell you, by the time I'm out of it, I'm sure I'm selling it a hundred percent, if not more. Yeah. I think that the, the CEO Mr. Dick, I would assume. Um, I thought Dick would be his first name. <laughs> um, he... Mr. Dick is my penis. <laughs> Just call me Dick. Uh, I think he had said, we no longer want to be part of this story anymore. Like, yeah. we just We're want donezo. out. We're donezo. So I'm sure a lot of people are mad at Dick's Sporting Goods because it gets that uh, domino effect that yeah. you predict it and that I said would not happen. Under any circumstance. However, I declare that we should rename it Nice Guy Sporting Goods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, not, not a dick, but a nice guy. Also, I want to just say one more thing if you want to privately buy bum stocks with me. Um, I pack it myself, but instead of um, like those little peanuts, those foam peanuts, yeah. I throw bullets in there. Okay. So, because I got a lot of bullets I got to get rid of, they're Armenian. I got him in a really weird deal years ago. 
<laughs> I didn't even bring this up with you guys. I'm an arms trader. I didn't know what? this. I'm a trader of arms. I mean, I, I thought it was weird enough you had all those bump stocks. Mm. You're a war dog? I guess you could call me a war dog on raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, you're using the same letters. <laughs> you know, a lot of people call me war dog as a way of they feel like they're disparaging me. But I w- I've taken it back, you know what I mean? And I'll even call myself a war diggity. <laughs> uh, you put in this story, Gail. It's up on the iBank. All these stories are up on the iBank today. Uh, I implore you to go look at them. Uh, but you said that Netflix is going to release 700 originals. And this has got to be a mistake. I swear, I I checked multiple sources that for 2018... Uh, they have, they said that they are going to release 700 original series, movies, and specials. Yes, 699 of them are going to be comedy specials. (laughs) (laughs) And how much, I I saw on the article somewhere, how much was it that they spent on content for this year? Uh, eight, eight billion on content. They're going to move up to two billion on marketing. And they, they need to even market. Yeah. Everybody's got Netflix. I thought the eight billion of content was more. Yeah, I mean. yeah it was. Uh, Vita, you're doing a new special soon. You're reviewing a new uh, special. There's one up today. What is it? It's Marlon Wayans Wokish. So I watched Marlon Wayans special. Yeah. And uh, I did not like it. Really? I, really? I actually, what? I hated it. I hated. This. I'm shocked because uh, I know you. You are also a Marlon Wayans fan. I love Marlon Wayans. I love. I grew up on uh, the Wayans Bros sitcom on In Living Color, White Chicks. You and all just that. call them Bros. The the show is called Bros. Oh, okay, <laughs> move up. I want to say. Me, no, where I can see what the fuck you're writing. So, um, I mean, the special wokish just isn't it. Wow. Damn. Yeah, Harsh like, take. It's. He's really energetic and he has incredible charisma on stage. Like you want to like him, but the material just isn't there. Like he's doing stuff like the Kardashians are ruining America. And you're like, come on, man. Like it is true though. (laughs) I mean, like America was great before the Kardashians. I have actually never thought of that before Vito. I think that's a very unique thought, (laughs) but it's, it's just, uh, it was a lot of like him. What's the tiny Kardashians name? Uh, uh, she's not Courtney. The, the Jen- yeah, Courtney. Jenners or Kardashians. The little one, the the one that has the kids with the fucking lunatic. That's Courtney. Courtney. Yeah, I think she's cute as shit. Yes, I like her. She's it's, my favorite. They say she's the most beautiful in person. I would have thought it was the mom. She also has the prettiest voice of I love anyone. Her. Yeah, I love not that like thing. Kim. <laughs> Kim sounds crazy, but I'm pretty normal. <laughs> I give them fucking those girls credit. They can destroy men. <laughs> Marlon Wayans brought that up in Wokish. Sounds like I'm gonna love this special. <laughs> this I agree is, like, with everything. This is his his this is Vito's quote. Most of the jokes are what I consider Facebook status comedy. Ouch. Damn. That's harsh. That's that's uh that's my new that's my new term I use for when people use general <laughs> The Kardashians suck, Trump sucks, the rapper designer is hard to understand. Oh, he also relies on what so- exactly sounds like Dave Chappelle impression of a white voice yeah what is that because i'm not familiar. you know when dave Chappelle like does the voice like this yeah <laughs> <That's the> ex- <laughs> we talk like that, that though is true. <laughs> so do the, do the whole impression and then white people be like hey i don't i don't do that over there i talk like this they wouldn't be like though <laughs> they don't say be like and then you also said that in the white guy's voice yeah. <laughs> You gotta just just I, do the white guy's voice. I mean, Don't set it up. Marlon Wayans. It was like your comedy special stink. <laughs> I'm not putting out a comedy special. I'm reviewing them. It's Vito Kalish <laughs> reviews on the entire bank. That's the name of it. Yeah, and then like the what uh, about what happened to Reviewdos? <laughs> And we wanted to put my name in there. I think he That's knows- too close to Ron Bennington interviews. It's like a fucking rip off. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's what I call Facebook style stealing. That is it. rebranding. Yeah. Facebook status comedy. Who's that right there? She a star? I don't know. With the blonde. No, that's Paul. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a regular fella. Chris, how you? Um, oh, you're getting help there. Okay, go ahead and do it. Mm, I'm a dirty white boy. Oh, I don't know whether this, is this story going about Chris Pratt. Is that going to be in the dish today? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. Yes. 
Let's so then we should mark these yeah. so I don't read them off because I've done that to her before. That's what I'm trying to fucking um, tell everybody. Do, do, do. All right, here's a, uh, this is the stories up on the I'm Bang today. And I find this interesting because I think we kind of talked about this other the other day. A uh, big real estate deal in California. And um, it stopped because the people found out that a lot of porn was shot in the house. Now, I think a lot of people that have watched porn go like this. That's a beautiful infinity pool or, yeah. wow, that's a gigantic kitchen that they're fucking in. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's usually some producer's house, but they stopped it. Now, is this the, can we see more of the house than just that? picture because i love you know yeah, i love the, the room looks great. i can see that you don't want to oh, here we go yeah look look at those views that's fucking pr- i know you know some people don't care about views but this is a great house yeah that's giant great. kitchen yeah i love that oh yeah that place is awesome What's it going for? I don't like that room too much. It's a little fucking eighties Miami. No place. amount of double penetration. One point eight million. From- Jesus Christ! You can't even get an <laughs> apartment for that in New York. I'd still let him fucking there if I had that house. <laughs> Make a little extra money. <laughs> yeah, dude. I know you'd be drunk one night and end up at a porn. <laughs> I watch a lot of videos on Pornhub and like, I feel like I've seen this house before, especially the pool area. Look at that nice bathtub. Yeah, it's like a nice soaking tub. Freestanding, soaking jizz. <laughs> a lot of camera room in there. Now, with this, uh, already we know Chris would not be turned up. But see, the normal thing, is, and we got talking, a lot of people won't take a house that uh, a murder took place in. Like the Sharon Tate house, no one ever stayed there again. Yeah. Beautiful, gorgeous fucking home. And they just let it rot. Well, I'll tell you my opinion on that one. Yeah. I would not want a high profile murder because I wouldn't want people like stopping by taking pictures of my house. Now, low pro- profile murder, you know what I mean? Just, just a like wife. a domestic dispute. Yeah. Like a husband who put a knife in his wife's yeah. Yeah, I think I would I it might creep me out, but I think I would be more likely to consider that okay versus, you know Would you want that house in Boulder where the little girl was murdered? It's a nice house. Yeah, I mean, it is a really fantastic. nice house, but no, too high profile. And plus, I think people are going to be showing up, going on the swing set. You know what? <laughs> we did that <laughs> with the yellow tape still up. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> Would you be, consider at least renting out the cellar as an Airbnb for people that are interested? You know, and you could be like 500 bucks a night. For murderinos? Yeah, for the murderinos. <laughs> Hell yeah. If you like murderinos, <laughs> Vito, porn house or murder house? What would be easier for you to sleep in? Porn house, because like people have had sex in a, like the house you're going to live in. People have had sex in now, a, not just, necessarily gangbang anal. Can I just specific? What about the places that hold bodies of water? The soaking tub, the pool. Are you just going to feel like the fluids or that's any stuck fucking in? like hotel? Do you fucking? I do think a a little bit about that. When I am in a hotel bed, I'm like, wow, a lot of people have had sex in this bed. I I do not allow that thought into my head. (laughs) Sometimes it creeps in there. And I will tell you this, a lot of people have been murdered or OD'd in the hotel rooms. That's true. Yeah. A lot of weird shit has happened in there. I think I'm fine with the sex aspect, even like the dirtiest stuff. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Ask the mouth? Ask the mouth is fine. Ask the mouth in your, in your tub. Yeah. In your mouth. (laughs) What if you had to lick the fucking dildo before you could go in there? That's part of the After deal. After you got pegged. I mean, how, what's the deal in the house in that situation? 1.8 million for this beautiful fucking home. It's gorgeous. Yeah, right on the San Andreas Fault. Who wouldn't want it? <laughs> Perfect location. I'm into it. I'm fine with a porn house. I'm f- a murder Would house. you stay in a house that somebody had sold pot in? No. I mean, is there anything like besides murder and uh and porn that is a turnoff for people is there another reason like would you would you buy a home that was once had a meth lab in it would that fucking turn you off? oh i have one i would like i find it weird the foreclosed house thing i mean we were that's a lot yeah that's a lot of houses but it just 
it makes me feel really sad when I see like, oh, house foreclosure. And I'm like, well, that's not that's something. That's the best deal you can get, though. I know, but it's really sad. Like, I, I feel like you're entering a place of pure sadness. Uh, you know the home that you pretty much grew up in? Yeah. I went in there and fucking helped take out the kids' stuff because uh, I just <laughs> bought it. No, man, I made that up. I wouldn't live in a house that used to be a dog fighting area, like a Michael Vick situation. <laughs> You you're afraid of ghost dogs. Could you saying. could you be on a farm where his pigs have been slaughtered? <laughs> I mean that's that's for food, but just dog fighting? No, I don't want to live. I don't in understand. Are you afraid they'll haunt you? The yeah. dogs? W- would you? How about somebody just ate a dog there before? It was a fucking Asian family, and they used to eat dog in there. They shouldn't have been eating the dog in there. Yeah, so. I understand, but could you stay? No, anything with dogs. No. I'm not saying it's not against the law. Pigs, I'm fine with. You can kill as many pigs as you want. I'm fine. This with haunted that. doghouse isn't a bad uh, movie premise. Fuck, it's like I'm a in pretty for good. It. <laughs> These fucking ghost dogs just ripped the shreds out of you. <laughs> Chris, you're in the other room. Tap out a fucking business plan for this. <laughs> Tap out a quick treatment and then mail it to yourself. Tapping now. Tapping now. <laughs> Not even writing. He's tapping. He goes, I'll tap it to you later. <laughs> tap you later. I'll tap you the deets later. I have a problem with the crystal meth house or like a drug lord's mansion. If I was in the position to buy a mansion and it was like a fucking drug lord, so you got like shot up there. That I have no, a he didn't get. That's still a murder house. Yeah. Okay. What if he was just everything. a drug lord and he was arrested there? I see. I feel like if he had like drug lord buddies, other drug lord rival drug lords, they'd still like buy, maybe put a hit on the house or something. That's like why would they do that? <laughs> <laughs> maybe they he got arrested. <laughs> well, Hold on. They don't have no any beef with that house. <laughs> that house fucked them over. <laughs> so you're Fuck not making house. sense there, Chris. You're acting like a drug lord is like, whoever goes in that fucking house next is dead. <laughs> you hear me? Dead. Yeah, if he gets out, he's going to want his fucking old house back. He is not. What if, all right, hold on. All right, <laughs> he's so a this, fucking person. He understands. He lost the house to the government. All right, what if this dude, this drug lord has like a bunch of cash or coke like fucking hidden on the on the ground? Fantastic. Bonus. <laughs> Someone said, come get it. I can't fucking deal with a hit squad. <laughs> hit squad. You're a fucking pussy, dude. I just found that out tonight. <laughs> Not that this is nighttime, but in my mind, this is the night. I'm done with him. <laughs> hey, Tony in Chicago. Hey, what about a uh, house like, say, where this knucklehead in Ohio kept this girl hostage in the basement for four or five years? No, I couldn't live, live there just because it's a ghetto shit house. But <laughs> no, I don't think I'd have a problem yeah, with a house that they had turned into one of those scary movies. Yeah. I- what are they called? Like. Hostel or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, hostel. Yeah, I turn into my house, bank rape house. No, yeah. I can't. I can't go in. What about a molestation house? Uh, I mean, if they're giving me that knowledge, <laughs> like if they're like, <laughs> just so you know, <laughs> we have to disclose to you someone was molested. <laughs> I probably am just gonna say no because I'll feel like they'll judge me if I say yes. <laughs> Oh, no, that doesn't bother us at all. I would turn that into a sewing room. Like, I would just be like, why the fuck did you tell me this? What if it was a house, Chris, that a minority lived in? Oh, you no. fucking racist. <laughs> oh, like, what about uh, historically dark? Like, it's an old plantation. Yeah. So it has, like, bad history to it. I think I'm okay. No, that wouldn't bother me at all. What? Uh, f- a nice plantation? You guys are horrible. <laughs> I'm serious. I'd be living in a historic house. A lot of acreage. All right, what if you lived in a house? There were 10 kids that had lived there, but it was five sets of Siamese twins. <laughs> Ew. So that, that you have a problem with, Chris? I you're going like to live in a fucking slave trading. <laughs> slave trading. Now, this is where they kept the slaves. Uh, over here is the children that they murdered because. All right, hold on. Alan Houston wants to tell us what life is like. Al, you're on the uh, on the air on Bennington. Hey, Ron. Uh, love you guys. Thanks. Uh, so I lived uh, with my buddy, and his mom was murdered in the apartment by her ex boyfriend. So we lived in the ha- We lived in the apartment for uh, maybe three, four months, and I swear to you, man, that place was haunted. I, there was there was never a night that didn't go by that we didn't hear any weird noises. But I couldn't really say anything because it was his mom. So I just kind of hang out. and. So you were pretty sure having, she was haunting the place. I mean, I, I don't know if you got to believe in that stuff, but I'll be honest with you, man. It was it was pretty it was pretty weird. I mean, you heard weird noises. Now, I've been in houses. I've heard weird noises before. House settling, stuff like that. And well, this. Yeah. But I think when you have the scary thing to connect to it, you do immediately. Yeah. 
But I also th- I do think that there, even if you're not like thinking about ghosts, like don't you think that a weird vibe can stay, weird energy can stay in a house? Like if you ever walked into a place and just thought this has this has something strange about it? Yes, Chris is fucking. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't stay in a hotel that Chris had stayed in. I sat on the other side of town in a Laquita. <laughs> God, you have no country for old men uh, motel. Chris, I say, he likes the hotel that the door opens directly into the street. <laughs> and I'll say like this, oh, there's been a mistake. That should be a motel, a motor in. <laughs> Well, the look, funny thing about that is we couldn't have been staying in a nicer place. Oh, God, ours we was went. unbelievable. You and Jen were just pampering yourself. We were. Fucking shit. <laughs> now, there's a thing. I have this at my house, like, when I'm watching movies at night. What's this vision, like, over here so called? Peripheral. Like, peripheral vision. Thank you. I just see see this a lot. Just I'll see something, like, running by, like, a ghost. Yeah. No, it isn't a ghost. I don't know why I say it. And just like, did something run around here? But I go, even if it was a ghost, what a fucking ghost can't kill a person. It's another fucking dimension. No one's ever saying, I hope an angel doesn't kill me. There's two things that is like reoccurring that we have a fear of. Yeah. And I, there's got to be a reason why. We're afraid of ghosts, which the yeah. idea of that is like they're already dead or sometimes yeah. victims of something. And then we're afraid of like dead body or skeleton. Yeah. As we're like, ah, this is bad. But like... That whatever Dude, how what killed that person is gone. I'm even scared of a uh, an animal skeleton, and when I'm eating chicken, I just scream. <laughs> like that's why wings are tough for me because I get to the bone so fast, I just scream. <gasps> and they'll go what? I'll go chicken skeleton. <laughs> uh, Jack in Houston, Jack. Uh, Ron, we pronounce it uh, Houston around here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I understand. Uh, I know Al here mentioned it earlier, but I won't make it sound like that. We had a bunch of bodies here in Houston. Back in 2001, a lady named Andrea Yates drowned her oh, five her. kids in a yeah. bathtub. Yeah. My coworker bought that house. <laughs> Got it for 32000 <laughs> That's exactly right. It was an incredible real estate discount, his argument was. Yeah. And you can imagine uh, not exactly a great return on investment at this point. Right. And what do you do when you want to just soak? Do you get in that tub? Yeah. That's exactly right. I, that's why I asked. Is that tub still there? And yeah. he says, oh, yeah, it's still there. I don't use it. But, okay, that's that's his limit. He's not physically going to get into that bathtub. I would so, still. Okay, I mean, I love a nice soak at the end of the day. <laughs> Me too. Mm-hmm. All right, Jack. Appreciate it, buddy. That's uh, the Andrea Yates estate. Uh. Um Wow. Yeah, the more we talk about it, I'm like, I said a high profile murder. I think all of it's off. I'm like, the more we're talking about Dude, it. I, I when I talk out. to my uh, real estate offer, I go, what's the story of murder houses? What do you got? Because I always know it's a good deal. <laughs> and I go, the bloodier, the better. I want to get in there <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> what is it, Vitz? The Versace house is beautiful in the show. And I'm, I, I've thought in a few episodes, would I like live there after he got killed on the doorstep? And I think that house, I would like if it's yeah, that South Beach. Just, yeah, but that's just the doorstep. But I also tell you, you're like a foot away from like clubs nonstop. Yeah, you gotta, that's what I mean, you gotta it's watch really, And then like right in front of you is just public beach. It's not like you're dealing with like but private it, beach. It's a public beach where there's titties, European titties at all times, and South nice. American titties. Okay. Mm-hmm. A that lot, is true. yeah. A lot of topless uh, bathing there. Yeah. A lot of it. <laughs> So you can sit on your murder stoop and just watch the tits go by. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at all these kids. What are these kids doing? I don't know. I guess it's bring your kids to work day, which I thought was every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, Jeff, Michigan. Hey, how you doing? Real good, man. Uh, hey, uh, this one is- my brother bought a meth lab in uh, on Merritt Island in Florida a few years back. And uh, the funny thing is he found the newscast that showed, like, it getting raided and stuff, and it had the same stupid, like, manatee mailbox that he had. But really nice house. Wouldn't it, have thought it was a meth lab. And where is it? It was on Merritt Island in Florida. Dude, I feel like I've been there. A meth house yeah, in like- Merritt Island? Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> yes, nice. it was nice, nice area. It wasn't like you're like you think of a meth lab. It was like a twenty five hundred square foot house on like this little lake, and it was really nice. But it, it was funny to watch the newscast of it being raided, and then uh, he sent it to me. He's like, oh, I bought this house. I'm like, oh, cool. But uh, then he flipped it like five years later and made a bunch of money. So meth labs aren't uh, all bad. Yeah, not in Florida. Nobody's going to fucking, uh, no one's going to worry about a meth lab in Florida. It's every other house. <laughs> uh, TL, what's up? Hey, man. Like, um, my, I had a cousin that was murdered in a sweet, sweet apartment there in uh, Manhattan. And the first thing the landlord did was try to offer me the, uh, the apartment. It was great rent, great place, and I really pulled a Seinfeld and started considering it. They're like, hmm, maybe, but I don't know. It's a little fucked up to do. I, what I what know. circumstances was your um, cousin murdered? Uh, my uh, my cousin was murdered by her husband. Mm. So just domestic. Yeah. You know, I mean, I would be, I mean, if it was, like Chris likes to point out, organized crime, a lot of times they will come back against the apartment. <laughs> They have a personal vendetta. Worried about that shit. Against the property itself. Shooting bullets at the walls. Now you really look like a dope. <laughs> Vito's even leaned in on you. I'm talking about if there's like shit hidden in the apartment that they're going to come back for. Yeah, they're going to come back for that apartment. That nobody, if you're a fucking drug runner, yeah. you don't hide shit in your own fucking home. That's the stupidest thing ever. You think the FBI isn't going to go through that thing like there's no tomorrow? Maybe it's in the fucking walls or whatever. Yes, it's they don't concrete. fucking x-ray the walls. They don't open the walls up. I didn't think they trashed the place like that. <laughs> you're not trashing it. You're scientifically going through. <laughs> what are they going to do? Well, there's no drugs here. <laughs> there's some fucking plaster right there on the wall, but... There's no way somebody would put something <laughs> in a wall. You you sound like you'd be the dumbest cop who ever lived. <laughs> That's what stash houses are for, too. Yes, of course. Now, would you live in a stash house? Yes. <laughs> That's you no, out of my stash. <laughs> How about everybody got mad at him for saying he was willing to jump out of his house and move in with his wife and his uh, um, neighbors? Hey, it's our buddy Chuck. Chuck, what's happening? Hey, Ronnie, uh, that was a good show last night with Nick. That's really funny. But uh, oh, God damn, is he? Oh, my... let, let, let's say, is Nick he, DiPaolo just unbelievable? He's quick. Yeah, God he damn, is. He's quick, you know. Yeah, and but vicious. I'm gonna let you know this guy that I went to school with. He's an old country fucker. He's worse than me. He bought a fucking double wide trailer that used to be a fucking whorehouse. And he still lives in it. He didn't really do nothing to it. Moved his furniture in. That was it. Lives in the double wide. Used to be a whore out. Wow, a whore trailer. That's yeah. pretty bad. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. A whore, it, was a, it was a double wide though. It the wheels was gone. They didn't have a foundation on it. Okay, because I don't even know if I could have sex in a whore trailer. <laughs> and then I feel like is everybody hearing this? <laughs> hey, if, if Chris was a fucking cop, he'd just have one bullet. <laughs> Barney Fife, you prick! You don't okay, even get the man, joke, do you? Take care. Peace, Chuck. Watch, Good Barney. to talk hey, to you. Hey, Brycey, Brycey, what's up? Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. I uh, like I live up in the country here in Canada, and there's there's kind of all these like abandoned houses from the 1930s and stuff, yeah. like in old yards. So we we were out of just exploring them one night, and uh, we go to this one house, and everything is like the table is set. And there's like baskets of clothes that are all folded up, and it's just like the people took off and left, and everything's covered with dust. That's weird, yeah, right? It's, really it's hard strange. to imagine what happened there. Yeah. All right. One time, me and my friends, we went out to this old abandoned dairy, right? In this uh, field. Like, so we get there, we're playing in this like dairy. It's like a factory thing. We were in. We were in these fucking, we got in these milk crates and went down these fucking rollers, right? Where the milk Sounds used to go. Fun. So then we're like, oh, there's a farmhouse over there. We go over, this fucking kind of burnt out and beat up and fucking people been there. We've gone all through the steps and we're little kids at the time, right? We get all the way to the top floor. There's a fucking hole in the ceiling like the sun's in, but there were fucking dresses in the closet. Oh, that's really weird. It was weird as shit, right? That's really creepy. Ugh. I don't know why that's like 
weird old dress is just still hanging Now, here's the thing, because I'm like 10 or 11, something like that. We fucking take our lighters out, light the dresses on fire, and run downstairs. That's a good idea. This is how (laughs) stupid kids are. We were actually on the top of that fucking factory, chasing around each other, and we're running up this thing and fucking stopped at the top. There was no second side of the roof, right? Oh, it just shit. went up and stopped like that. And I think back at that, I go, there's a chance you could have been killed when yeah. you were a kid, like a fucking idiot. And then I think one of the kids' fucking foot went through uh, one of the roofs when we were running around. I come back, I had all this fucking, like, tar all over my uh, face and from, you know, playing in that fucking place. And my mom was just fucking wailing on me. I go, where were you to get this? I know nothing. We were playing fucking football up the street. Just fucking lying my ass off. But I had fucking like tar from like fucking roof tar all over my clothes, <laughs> on my face, on my hands. Too stupid to even stop and watch up. Just gonna be walking in my house and start making a sandwich. Can't tell you how dumb a kid is. You guys are like Florida Project. Yeah, I guess in our own way. All kids are like Florida Project. I picked out to be best picture this Sunday night at the Oscars. I, <laughs> Not I think nominated. between now and then it's going to get nominated. <laughs> um, Dave, what's up? What's going on, guys? How you doing today? Good. I got a uh, my high school. One of my high school teachers. Uh, we live in Yorktown, Virginia, uh, and he's he still lives there in a house that was a uh, it was a hospital during the civil during the uh, Civil War. Um, and like when you go in one of the bathrooms, it's still it's still got like the names of people who like were dying like soldiers who were dying there where they carved their names into the wall um and the house it was written up by time magazine as one of the most haunted houses in uh in america how can you be one of the most haunted houses i mean i don't even believe in haunted houses like what's the what's the scale here like what are we judging it on quantity of ghosts zero to a hundred <laughs> it's, it's crazy he uh they had they apparently had an they had an exorcism at one point in the, the basement and they sealed off the door. I've been to the house. He was, he was the high school baseball coach. And uh, you can't get, like, the door is, like, welded shut in the bottom. He's like, we had an exorcism, and all, yeah. the, all the ghosts are down there Wait, now. I, I read about this. This baseball coach, at the end of the season, he just walks off the field into a cornfield and disappears. <laughs> uh, throw throw <laughs> exorcism house into my no-go for purchase. If you just said an exorcism, no deaths, just an exorcism took place, nope. All right, could you live in a house where there were children that had been homeschooled there? Ew. No. Did they, did they ever leave? We got a break here. Um, we have a surprise person for the dish, uh, and we're very excited about it, and I don't think anybody could even guess this. I could give clues, and you still couldn't guess. So... um you will want to hang around. And also, I forgot to tell you about this. If you're listening to Sam and Jim today, uh, you heard Pat Oswald uh, stop by. Well, what's today? Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. Tomorrow, there's a great new comedy coming to NBC called AP Bio. It stars Glenn Howerton from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia as Jack Griffin a disgraced Harvard philosophy scholar who ends up teaching advanced placement biology at a high school in Toledo. Except he has no interest whatsoever in teaching the kids biology. Instead, he'd prefer to use the smartest kids in school to help him get revenge on his academic rival. And believe me, Jack will stop at nothing to get his revenge. AP bio. It's smart. It's outrageous. And I think you'll agree. It's funny. In a sick, twisted kind of way. AP Bio also stars comedy legend Pat Oswalt, who was here this morning, as the school principal doing his best to keep Jack in line. The show is from executive producer Seth Meyers and Lauren Michaels from SNL. Critics are raving that AP Bio is hilarious and laugh-out-loud funny. You won't want to miss this show. Catch the premiere of AP Bio, starring Glenn Howerton and Pat Oswalt tomorrow on NBC. This week's Dish segment is presented by Dish, ranked number one in customer service nationally by J.D. Power and their customers. Dish tuned in to you. To learn more, call one 844 call dish or go to dish.com. Uh, Jen, you have a special Dish guest today. Yes, I do. Have him enter and sign in, please. 
<laughs> Who do we have, Jen? E Rock. E Rock! Hello. <laughs> Good to see you, pal. Good to see all of you. I know you got your uh, big uh, podcast, <laughs> It's Eric Nagel. Uh, you can down that, uh, download that on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcast. Uh, it's also part of the iHeartRadio app. Good to see you. How's everything going? Doing well. Yeah? Better, uh, I'm not going to lie, better than expected. Better than expected. Yeah. You're enjoying life again. I'm enjoying life again. Uh, you would think... See that by the amount of weight that I've gained. But, um, yeah, I'm enjoying life and uh, enjoying doing radio again. Sure. Even though it's not traditional radio as yeah. we know it, but uh, the way everything's moving and the medium's changing, uh, I've been finding all the little tricks and trades to advance everything and uh, doing good. Doing good. Now, this is um, this is the future for you, you think? You're going to stay in this that style radio? Um, I think it's... Honestly, I think it's the future for everybody. Yeah. I mean, outside of uh, of satellite radio, terrestrial is just... Like, we've always said, you know, for like the last 10, 15 years that radio was dying or whatever, but it's harder than ever to do anything in terrestrial, not just for the restriction of the content, but the companies just don't do well anymore. Yeah. Nothing's surviving. Uh, you got the second biggest radio company out there just filed bankruptcy, and by the end of the year, the biggest radio company is going to default and, and have a whole bunch of problems. Well, they all went so far in debt yeah. and in basically a dying bu- business, but I don't ever see how they were going to pay that off. I don't either. Were going gr- a couple great. of years ago, uh, when it was Clear Channel, uh, they were like $20 billion in debt, yeah. and they restructured everything, refinanced everything, and now as iHeart, they're over like twenty five billion in debt, right. so they d- didn't do anything. Mm, so right. I just I don't know where these companies are going to survive anymore, unless you know, like the old AT and T days where they were broken up because of they were a monopoly. Yeah, they may have to break this company up because of financial reasons. Dude, when, back when the, you couldn't own a bunch of stations, yeah, you had two. It was so much fun. It was so much fun in this country. All kinds of people were doing all kinds of different radio. Right. And then it became this weird thing where... Well, it's always going to be cooler when it's smaller. You know what I mean? Like, you're always going to get something that's more unique to whatever that local thing is. So you're saying, like, a a, a dive bar would be more fun than another TGI Fridays. Right. Exactly. All right, Jen, let's start dishing. This was a great booking by you, though. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ryan Seacrest he has a bunch of sexual assault Uh-oh. allegations against him um, right now it's his former stylist Susie Hardy he's denying the claims but right now um, even though he's denying it publicists are saying that uh, at the Oscars this weekend that they're going to steer their stars away from him oh that's actually a cool story <laughs> that is very cool. yeah he uh, talk about another guy who just he he was always very vanilla, you right. know, and he but he was the cookie cutter mold. He fit into any project that you needed yeah. a good looking, charismatic host. And uh, his his current radio deal, he yeah. does he, when he was doing uh, the, the live with uh, with Kelly. Yeah. They had a radio station built in that facility, so he could patch into L.A. and that would syndicate the E Studios. No matter where they have it in New York or L.A., have uh, studios built for him wherever he goes. He has radio st- right. stations built into his agreement, so he can do radio at any time. And this was the guy that America went to, that every network went to. So he was like, he's safe. He's there's no problems with yeah. him. Face of American Idol, all of these things, yeah. and now with this accusation, it's just all going to crumble. You think so? It's it, if, if there's any solid, it, all it takes now is an allegation. Right. It doesn't even have to be that innocent to proven guilty anymore, which it should. Do you think just the allegations will stick, though? Do you if think that it has to be proven or convicted? It, or? It, it, well, it's up to each corporation, right. but he does make people money, and he's a great broadcaster. Yeah, yeah. he is. His worst thing he does is Kelly's show. And it's yeah. multi- multiple accusations, and he works for Disney, and Disney oh, yeah. is a zero dollar on anything. Yeah. If you even look at somebody the wrong way, Disney kind of pops you out of your position. I didn't even think of that, because at CBS, they're like 40%. <laughs> <laughs> but Disney is zero. But I do like the idea of people just like having their stars avoid him like a rock in the river. I'll be watching now. Like, I never watched that. Go ahead. Now. I'll be definitely watching for him to be gone. Francis! Francis! Oh, we couldn't get Francis. <laughs> and he's part of the new American Idol that's yes. coming out. 
That's yeah. part of his deal for right. when he went to uh, live with Kelly. That because they, they paid him like seventy five million dollars, and nobody could figure out for that job why he was making so much. Then it was revealed he's part of the American Idol. Reboot. Now I read his thing. She goes, she wanted like a million or two million dollars from me, and I wasn't going to pay it. I'm like, you should have paid it. Yeah. You should have just fucking paid off the blackmail. You know. <laughs> um. But we'll see what happens. I'm. I think he, he's gonna. I think he's too valuable to the company. You're saying no. I think out. no. I definitely think he's too. Val- he's too valuable to too many companies. Yeah. I mean, uh, E, which I don't know if NBC owns E or whoever owns um, E, but yeah. he has a huge stake in E. He owns the Kardashian franchise. He does. He owns yes. it. Yeah. yeah. He he's the one who brought it. that to E. Yeah. I had no he's idea. He's the producer of that. Of that. that yeah. He had a stake yeah. uh, uh, later on in ownership with American Idol mm-hmm. um, back when it was on Fox. He's doing this. Th- now he's got this huge investment with Disney. He's worth too much, but I don't know if that even matters anymore, that if a company can just try to smooth it out where you, you're worth so much, but the public doesn't let things go now, especially on Twitter, yeah. that they'll just keep fanning the flames on this. Oh, they can be mean, that Twitter. <laughs> oh, boy, they can be mean. <laughs> Well, Stan Lee, he fired his longtime manager um, over claims of a plot to drive a wedge between him and his daughter, J.C. Lee. He also fired his uh, uh, his nurse, Linda Sanchez, who admitted to giving him naked hi- naked showers and was also accused of giving him happy ending massages. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> He's an old guy who, you know, used to draw. Yeah. <laughs> Let him have whatever he needs. Do you have, have you had Stan Lee on your show? No. The bro- yeah. uh, Stan Lee never does anything on the east coast yeah and uh it's his schedule is so tight that it's very hard to, to get him unless you're on the west coast and yeah. you're in front of him uh he also just had a thing too where somebody stole like a million and a half dollars out of his house yeah and the wow. detectives went there and they're trying to figure out who took his money because this isn't the first time it happened yeah he's had other times where all of a sudden he'd go and look and oh i lost eight hundred thousand dollars somebody just took it out of my house <laughs> green goblin <laughs> I, 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 I tell you. that son of a bitch pumpkins is everywhere it, is it maybe that he's just misplacing no it's money. elder abuse <laughs> He's a really old guy. Yeah, he's like four or five. Yeah, so. yeah, he's that old, and just very positive. Yeah, the, the most positive person I've ever seen. And if he needs a happy ending, <laughs> you know who's it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> no, they had to want to do it, right? Yeah, he created Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people say he lies about everything he said he created, though. So. He have... said he takes a lot of credit for shit that he didn't do. Really? Yeah. So is he more like, you're saying more like of a producer? Like, like a Steve Jobs, I guess. Right. So he, but he was not maybe the creative. Well, I think a lot of times he it. went like this. What if we have a Spider-Man? And then everybody else went to work on it. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It's like me with smoke pants. I still feel like I invented them. <laughs> Dish it! Dish it! <laughs> Eric Nagel's in with us. It's Eric Nagel. Streams each week on the iHeartRadio app. You can download it on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, whatever you get your podcast. Well, Chris Pratt right now is, he's receiving a lot of backlash on Twitter for offering up his prayers and condolences to Kevin Smith, who just suffered, suffered a heart attack. He um, tweeted to him that uh, he's praying for him. He will continue to. He inspired him with clerks when he was a senior. And yeah, a lot of people are giving him shit for it because uh, they say that uh, he wasn't going to help Smith. Doctors and medicine will. And Pratt, you know, he just should have What's stuck wrong? to a Christian Twitter. What's Seriously, what's wrong with people? <laughs> so wait, they're just upset because he said prayers? Yes. yes. People say prayers. Yeah, and but, he's a Christian. Yeah. But it's also people are so hypersensitive. It's rolling over from all the school shooting stuff. Right. Where when people oh. say thoughts and prayers, people are like, well, you're not doing anything active to make change in this situation. The guy had a heart attack. Right. You can't. It's not like, well, we're neglecting people who have heart attacks in this yeah. country. We're not doing anything to help them. Yeah, I don't think. I think people are mixing this up. Too I think much. it's sad. Thoughts, <laughs> thoughts and prayers are definitely okay for heart attacks. You I can't. Think. You can't get mad at somebody for saying you're in my prayers <laughs> how can you get mad at that person <laughs> are you helping them with their heart no, disease no, no. <laughs> and most time it's you know it's just a, a shallow compliment you put out there so right. nobody else gives you shit for not saying it yeah. yeah i think it's totally acceptable people nitpicking over this i get it we, we the thoughts and prayers became a buzzword in reaction to not doing anything but this yeah. is not the same thing and plus people never know how to say 
the right thing when somebody's either gone through like a tragedy or something but really Chris hard. Chris always says to me, threats and, par- and prayers. <laughs> I'm like, that's just fucking horrible. <laughs> what do you even mean by fun. that? I just like to have fun. I like to change a little bit, okay. you know? <laughs> Throts and pears. Yeah. Yeah, Throts and pears. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Smith also said that his heart attack was a reaction to bad milk. He said no, on his. <laughs> he did not say that. <laughs> he said uh, he felt a little nauseous and then he tried to lay down on the floor. He wound up getting ill, like threw up, but mostly bile. So I just thought, like, you know, I got some bad milk. Yeah, he. but he realized later it was a heart attack. Yeah, that's he says caused what he the, thought. the total blockage <laughs> yeah. of the Widowmaker. <laughs> it's just bad milk, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to get some new but milk and ever, everything will be have fine. Have you ever done that? You ever got a flow and you're like, the last thing I ate, what was it? Apple pie? I'm never eating that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that where I had bad associations. Yeah. I once, when I was uh, really, really hungover, had um french onion soup and i haven't had it since because it, it's yeah. like there's like an association yeah with like that i wasn't meant to i was yeah. not meant to eat that at that time i had a bad piece of licorice and i blamed it on puerto ricans <laughs> and, um, <laughs> i don't even think there was any reason for that i gotta stop really i had to stop and take a good look at myself and get woke quick <laughs> Heather Lott. <laughs> but everything's okay with Kevin Smith now, right? Yes. Yeah, he looked good no. in his yeah. picture. Do you know that he was doing a special that night? He had. Yeah, that was surprising. He yeah. was taping, he, he, like, over the weekend, he made an announcement that he was taping a comedy special. I don't right. know if it was for Netflix or something. Yeah. But he's not a stand up comedian. He's a comedic writer, but he's not a stand up comedian. And. He was taping the special and had to cancel the second one because that's yeah. when he realized he was in trouble. Yeah, bad milk. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. He's been a public speaker for so long. Oh, and yeah. He's a hilarious public speaker. You know, maybe his jokes are not as tight as they should be, but people go to him and they expect to laugh. Like if he was just sitting there and talking about the facts, he wouldn't draw. He's a funny dude. Let me ask you, you you've been and known the comedy world for so yeah. long. When somebody is not a comedian and then goes to try comedy, um obviously it's not easy, but depending on your level of celebrity, sometimes you get a pass that they'll yeah. let you do a special. For somebody like him who's had a, a, a tremendous body of work from movies into podcasting into comedy writing to all these different things, for him to make this progression to do a stand-up just maybe it's for him he's like i want to give this a try i've always yeah. wanted to do it does he get a pass based on the fact that he's giving the uh, making the attempt to try to do it first of all anybody that they want to pay can do it right i mean if netflix wants to pay bruce willis to do it yeah yeah he could do a bad special but it's still a special now kevin has put out dvds of him on stage talking and telling stories to me that's a special you know what I mean? There's plenty. Ron White just gets up and tells hilarious stories. You know, he's not doing one-liners. Kreischer's a great storyteller. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Kevin Smith is a comedic writer, director, actor. And, like, Mike Birbiglia kind of started doing, he was doing yeah. one-man shows, and then that kind of went to him doing more stand-up. Yeah. But those guys were always in the vein of a traditional stand-up, where I remember... If, just a few years ago, Judd Apatow yeah. was going to do a special, and people who, if they didn't know his history, that he started as a stand-up right. and then moved to other things, they're like, Judd Apatow's going to do comedy? And it was met with mixed reviews before it actually came out. Right. Is this going to happen with Kevin? They're yeah, like, people I mean, like is he re- should he really be doing this before yeah. the special comes out? I think there are people that are purists when it comes to that, but that's, you know, like you said, at some point, somebody is not a comedian, and then they are one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if Barack Obama has been a public speaker his whole life, if he goes, I'm putting out a special, what's to stop him? All right. You know? <laughs> I'll tell you this. I'd the last 15 it. minutes, he's just taking questions. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you're just like, you're hoping that they're doing the work for you. <laughs> Pacing like Chris Rock. Yeah. I wonder if Vito would give that a good review or a bad review. I don't know. Vito Kalis reviews does not take it easy on anybody. <laughs> you fucking basically interview ripped off my fucking show. I know. Somebody, was... somebody thought uh, Vito Kalis reviews would be a good thing. I was like, I oh, like somebody. It. Okay, the fucking little mouse in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> here, why don't you take this fucking jacket? Because you're taking everything else from me. I don't want to take it. Put anything. on this jacket. I'll oh. tell you what. Here's my fucking house keys. Go ahead. <laughs> Go home and help yourself. Oh, so this is your table. (laughs) (laughs) 
All right, Tim wants to jump into this. Tim, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey, E-Rock, great to hear you, man. Thanks, man. Um, wanted to call, and uh, I, I just saw on Facebook the other day, Bill Murray's coming to Pittsburgh. And I, I don't know if this is something he's been doing for a while or how that would translate into doing stand-up. Well, it's, uh, you know, Burt Reynolds is out doing a tour where he tells old stories and stuff like With that. With Dom DeLuise? Um, no, Dom has passed away. <laughs> Um, and, um, there's been other Marty, um, yeah. has done the same thing. So yeah, you could go always go out and do a night of stories. And is that comedy, you know, I guess it's up to the audience to decide. It's comedic. Yeah. I mean, there are plenty of funny comedians that I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'd call that comedy. Right. You know, because they might be a woman or <laughs> a minority or missing a limb. <laughs> Or a puppet. Yeah. Yeah, do do you consider Jeff Dunham's specials to be a special? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it's if he had just started, I'd be skeptical, but he's yeah. been around, like, when they used to have, like, Caroline's Comedy Club on, on Fox 5 yeah. and the uh, Comic Strip Live. He's been on all of those things, so you kind of yeah. have to say he's cemented he's in. into it. Yeah. He's in. Um, yeah. I, I put Kevin Smith as yes in. I'm going to watch the special right up until I see him grabbing on his chest. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, is that milk. bad milk? Is he doing a Fred <laughs> Sanford in person? Dish. Everybody's at home right now. What are you eating your food on? A dish. Let's get that. <laughs> dish it. <laughs> By the way, he stinks in that room, Vito. I know. That's my room. I know. <laughs> So Heather Locklear is being uh, charged for assaulting her new boyfriend, Chris Hesser, and he's all she's also um, attacked for also attacking the cops who responded to the 911 call. Wow. Attacking yeah. him and the cops. She gets fucking loaded. I did not know that she was for wild. years. She likes to. Well, you know what? You sit around, you enjoy some cocktails. And before you know it, sure. you're <laughs> I mean, in your 50s. I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's just fun. laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm certainly well, not if I'm going to fight. Domestic problem? Yeah. I don't know what the cops coming around in the day. We're gonna get a little bit of this too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Heather Locklear. Many, many. When I first started radio, uh, I met her. I still think to this day the most beautiful person I ever saw in person. Just yes. stunning. She's really, and she is the type of model too that it's like, oh, you get. It. You know how sometimes like a model's like, well, that that's unique in an interesting way. Like she's just like. She's just perfect. Like right. she's just so very palatable. I feel right. Looks like California. Yeah, <laughs> everything we want California to be. Yeah, blonde, blonde hair, pale skin, blue eyes, punching <laughs> cops. Yeah. But she's always been known for being difficult on everything that she's worked on. Really, is that right? Like uh, I met her once when she was on uh, Melrose Place, and uh, all the stories behind the scenes were that uh, it was her and I, another girl. I can't remember. But Shannon Doherty. No, she was on 902 oh, now. Um, it's the one who, I think her last name was Cross. She was like the psycho bitchy that tried to burn everything down. Oh, um, but uh, Heather always had like her own dressing room, her own area, her own stuff, then came in and barely did the rehearsals at some point. Like she's always known for being. Just like me and radio. <laughs> yeah. Man, I came in the last minute and I leave during the song. Cut out the door, <laughs> going yeah. in the car, going home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, but that's, uh, you just hate to see her acting like Barfly. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? pretty nuts. Plus, I was thinking, like, she seems like she's uh, petite. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's not going to be, no woman's going to beat up a cop. That's right. why they probably thought it was adorable. <laughs> you sure problems with uh, Sambora, too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They didn't work out well. And then the guy before that, that didn't work out well. Now she's dating Artie Lang. And it seems like the two of them <laughs> are going to make a real go at it. <laughs> it's a match. <laughs> They're there for each other. Yeah. Dish. <laughs> Dish it. So Amy Schumer uh, recently uh -oh. <laughs> just got married. But now she's talking about her wedding and, um, you know, to Chris Fisher. And she said in her vows, she promised to go down on him. Um, <laughs> That's nice. That's really sweet. <laughs> And she just said during the whole vow, uh, during the vows, they were both just heckling each other. You know where where she said this? On Nikki Glaser's show. <laughs> Nikki Glaser show. She said it right over there. Three days later, we get it. Well, it takes that long to travel to get here. Uh, funny vows. Does they work for you? Um, I think with somebody who is funny, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I would say don't attempt funny vows 
if you aren't funny. Yeah. Like, I think that sometimes people do that. I would say the same for funny uh, best man or, you know, right. bridesmaid uh, speech. I've heard people try to do that and, like, it really not go well. Yeah. I mean, really not. I saw um, a maid of honor give a speech and then she started to do this thing where she said how, like, he found her attractive right away. But then she was saying all the stuff that she said that was physically weird about him. And it was just like silent. I mean, his family was seemed upset. Her family seemed uncomfortable. And she's like, he, she said, he has big ears and weird, goofy teeth. And look at how it worked out. Every, and we're like, oh, no. Dude, there would have been just, one guy laughing really fucking hard. It's true. The guy taping it. <laughs> yeah, look. And like he ripped him. She just started kind of like petting his head and like trying to be like, "Oh, it's funny, right?" And he just he looked like he was trying to have you a were good there time. For this? Yeah, it was horrible. Holy shit! It was so bad. You I wanted know some awful people. I wanted to crawl out of my skin. I think you're allowed to take your card back at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, look, this this was just too this much. You're not awful. even getting the three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, you don't want a stage show. You don't want a performance. You don't even want to be at the ceremony most of the time. Like every time you, you get something in the mail that you're invited to a wedding, it's just dread. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I want it in and out. Go up there, say the thing, done in five minutes. Go to the extend the reception. You yes. don't need yeah. to be I at agree. the ceremony. I've been to some weddings where you feel like you get on the dance floor and like a couple songs later it's over and you're like, this is literally the only part I wanted to do. The, this is the only part I liked. The only thing that I like is the travel and the destination. <laughs> uh, I was just invited to a wedding that starts in Trenton. And then we're getting on a bus <laughs> and heading into Allentown. And I'm like, that's a long day. <laughs> oh, my God. And depression I, to depression. Yeah. Ooh, uh, weddings are so insane. Yeah, they're this really, whole really nice. thing of we want to share our love with you. We've known you guys for fucking seven years. Send me a picture card like you do at Christmas. Yeah. yeah. You know, just take a photo and then, oh, look, there's the best. I'll cut you a check. Thank you for not inviting me. Right. Yeah. I think that that should be an option is that you like you maybe you get a discounted amount that you get to send. I either come like to like, your wedding or you get a gift. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Which one, one, one do two. you want? You check it off there. Not are, are you going to RSVP That's or whatever? Perfect. Are you going to come to the party because the party is, you know, my presence is your gift? Or do you want an actual gift where I'm not going to be there, but I'll send you a check or something from Pottery Barn? Twice I had to say that I could not attend destination weddings, mm -hmm. that I could not make it. And I thought for sure that I was that they were going to be like, OK, no problem, because I know it's super far. Yeah. One of them, I don't even feel I was that close with. And both couples were really upset with me, like really actively disappointed and they got a check i mean i still gave a present to yeah. say congratulations learn to end friendships dude dude that's that, the worst that, i don't want to be friends with life? people no then you're See, better what, off. What, yeah yeah look at that after all that shit i was just like that i mean but well, well i thought that you would be like yeah totally. i would feel happy to let someone off the hook i let people off the hook for anything yeah like if someone even if i have plans with a friend I'm well, happy when they text me I, and go, you know, I'm really not feeling well. I'm like, please, please stay home. This is great. I, I'm I, so happy that we're done. I hate to step on you, but there's a woman in the hall wearing the eight ball jacket from Seinfeld. Oh, really? Yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> Putty's jacket. She's carrying a big salad. <laughs> the magic eight ball says, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, weddings are terrible, and so are the people that are in them. <laughs> So I Dash Dash Charlize Theron recently revealed Ooh, that sexy. she <laughs> anytime there's an attractive woman Whoa. She's not here. Uh, I'm just saying Whoa. she's hot. She quit mm. cannabis smoking um, <laughs> early, <laughs> early in her thirties because it made her boring. But before she was a wake and baker for most of her life. Yeah, I didn't find her boring ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you, you know when you look like that, you, you probably don't, you yeah. don't have to be, you know, you don't have to wow the room with. I can't imagine stories. that I, I'd be with her and be like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> she just goes on and on. I'd just be like, is this working? Are we getting closer? I think she loves me back. She sits there. There's no complaints. So yeah, <laughs> this is working great. What was the first thing you saw her in? Do you remember the first movie? Um, uh, the Keanu Reeves Al Pacino movie. 
Devil's uh, Advocate? Yes. No, yeah, yeah, Devil's Advocate. Yeah. I think that was That's the first thing I That's what I, I think saw. it was for me, too. Mine was uh, something like Six Days in the Valley or something like that. Two Days in the Valley. Two Days in the Valley. She was in a fucking cat suit and uh, in a wrestling match with another chick. And I'm like, this might be the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Fucking yeah. wonderful. And then I even realized that she was the girlfriend who dumped the guy in the Wonders. Remember the... Oh, the yeah, she's the the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was. yeah, but I think I might have seen her in that first... Two Days in the Valley. It's easy. Charlie Theron. Um, but yeah, t- and she was so su- she was so pretty and cruel in that Pretty movie. and boring and cruel. She was like, a, I guess she was high. Like, wouldn't you want to look at her there? It's a very 60s kitty yeah. cat look. But you could have grabbed video, right? You could have been on this. So there's a YouTube channel. <laughs> and I'm just pointing out, see if you can find, like, the cat fight scene with her. Look how stunning she was. When Terry Hatcher thought she was going to yeah. be a big deal. Yeah. This is when Terry Hatcher was on the top. Look at that ass. <laughs> Looks good and white. Yeah, unbelievable. Very good and white. <laughs> you just want to ride you- those volumes and remember that you're producing a what? A radio show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about audio. Terry Hodges coming off like, I'm Lois Lane. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's big things opening up for me. <laughs> and you think that we haven't seen much of her in how long now? Ten years? Terry Hatcher? That. What, is it? I only remember her from Lois and Clark on uh, ABC yeah. back in the 90s. Was I, she one of the people they were like being pretty rough on because she got work done? I kind of remember her being one of those Yeah, people. she was definitely somebody that the gossip magazines back when we used yeah. to have them yeah. were difficult. They're very rough on those women. You can't yeah. age, but you can't get work done. You can't do anything. <laughs> you can't do anything. They What they want you to do is I, uh, OD and die young, and then they'll fucking... Oh, she was you. the most beautiful woman in the Stunning. world. Stunning. <laughs> Makes us wonder where she'd be today. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> She's still beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bitch. Let's make this happen. <laughs> Josh! <laughs> That's my favorite one. <laughs> Out of all of them? <laughs> Come on, bitch. Let's make this happen. <laughs> Dash. Eric Nagel sitting in with us uh, today. It's Eric Nagel streams uh, each week on iHeartRadio app, uh, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts. What kind of guests you've been uh, running on there? Um, not as many as we used to get here, uh, but, uh, you know, time to time we get a lot of the, the people that we've had contacts with. And, uh-huh. uh, we were actually supposed to be doing something with comic book men. They opened up their own studio now, officially, uh-huh. uh, down in Red Bank. We were supposed to do something with all of them and it got getting delayed and we're, they're like, oh, let's just wait for the new season to start up, which start up this past weekend. Yeah. And uh, now everything's on hold as they're trying to figure out Kevin's situation, yeah, I bet. which is understandable. But uh, you know, time to time we get some people. But once you get that stent, you should be able to bounce back pretty quickly. Yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know what Colin's situation is yeah. currently, but I've from what I've heard, he's doing very well. If you don't die immediately from a heart attack, you're fine. They just oh, right. they you know they kind of build it back up, and you're okay. The bad thing is if you die, then yeah. they can't do anything about it. Then there's not a lot to do. No. No. So just make sure if you have a heart attack, don't die from it. <laughs> well, you've, you've un- you know, unfortunately been around that situation yeah. for a long time with people who have had heart issues. Yeah. Um, I was reading Kevin's thing. What is this that they cut through the groin to put the stent in? Yeah, they, yeah. they cut in the groin, and then they put this kind of tube thing up the stent is on the end of it and they, and they go like all the way snake through. it through yeah so here he is with this big stent you don't crack the ribs open i mean that's the thing that you don't want to have happen right right the, going up it's just right next to uh what technically is the cock and ball <laughs> area they run it right up and fit it right in there and you know when i went over to see fez uh one of his heart attacks it was before he went in there was it was like O'Hare Airport, the number of guys on gurneys Holy that were going shit. in there. And, you know, it happens. You don't want to hear, you know, the deaths the way you used to. When I was younger, you know, 
They would crack you open, work on the heart, and a lot of guys would die on the table. Yeah. They don't crack you open unless they have to do major stuff now. Also, it wasn't there just so many side effects beyond just that? Even yeah, the, the heart, depression heart, yeah. and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Those were the days when they used to call it the zipper club, right? Yeah. Yeah, the old school where you'd see older men with the, uh, yeah. yeah, like especially down in Florida, you'd see the older guys down by the beach that had the, the scar going down the, uh, the left side. Yeah, like the clown from uh, The Simpsons. <laughs> Crusty. Yeah, the, yeah, Crusty always has that thing there. Scar in like, the third nipple. It's yeah. just great. Uh, but yeah, if it, it's a much easier procedure. And again, it's a scary thing to have a heart attack, but once you make it to the hospital and they do that, you're, you're pretty much so back to normal. everything's like a micro incision now, right? Yes. And it's everything's hidden, so you never see anything anymore. Well, you know, they did the same thing when I had my appendix out. It was just this tiny little thing. And my cousin, when I was a kid, it basically looked like somebody opened her up with a can opener yeah. right, right back then. And mine, it it literally went away. Like, I can't even find out where they put that thing in to suck my right. uh, appendix out of there. That's so amazing. Yeah. That, 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 that's where it's at now. Because, again, down in Florida, on the beach, you'd either see the guys, with, the older guys with the with the zipper on their chest, or some of the older women who had C-sections. Yes. Where they would just cut from the belly button down or yeah. up to the belly button yeah. and pull it out this way. Now it's just it's right just across your bikini thing, line, yeah. and then it heals up, and you yeah. have no idea that they had anything done. I just say, while you're in there, get my heart, so take care of everything. <laughs> just make sure take everything's the baby good. out, get my heart fixed, <laughs> take a good look at my appendix, do all the stuff you need to do. Well, you know, there, and even this is going to seem barbaric in another 10 years or so, when they're going to be doing micro surgery with these basically little machines that, are, oh, yeah. that they put in a pill and you just swallow oh, it. Oh, the, uh, the nanites. Yeah. 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 I wanted it to be where, like in Star Trek, where Bones would just scan you with his little handheld thing, and then yeah. give you a pill, and then your cancer's gone. Yeah, it's all done. Where the, we, the lady was on the gurney dying, he gives her the pill, and now she's dancing around with her ass hanging out of the... It seems like anybody could be a doctor in the future. Yeah. You know I mean, anybody was like, yeah, I uh, we went to medical school yesterday, and um, already. <laughs> Mostly, it's just pills. I did it online at the University of Arizona. It's nice. Nice. Dash. Oh my god, speed it up, you ugly toe fact. What's that mean? Who gives a shit? Just say things. Dash. <laughs> <laughs> well, Serena's, <laughs> Serena Williams' uh, husband surprised her with a bunch of billboards because she's. Three billboards? <laughs> it was, uh, I think it was four. It was actually oh. four for yeah. some reason. That's odd. One said greatest, the other one said mama, and then of all time, and then the last one said Serena Williams, GMO AT. Jesus. Why did she get this? <laughs> because uh, she's going to be in the BNP Paribas Open. Doesn't even seem like uh, it's her first yeah. tournament since having the kid. I think. Oh well, you know, I guess if you got the money, yeah, I guess <laughs> three, four billboards. It. <laughs> well, I'll say this: I'd be. It was. I was billboarded by it. If you know what I mean, <laughs> billboard with it. <laughs> I mean, look, I don't really think that he had to go for four. I think that he easily could have done well, three and to, just stayed He had to the one-up the movie, and he yeah. had to one-up Philadelphia <laughs> trying to get LeBron James. <laughs> and they got him. I don't know whether you guys heard it, but LeBron said, there's billboards. Just <laughs> fucking turn it around. Of course I'll that's, go. That's LeBron's career. He just goes to every uh, struggling team to give them a championship. Yeah. Then he goes to the next one. I think Serena's going to as well just yeah. after this. Well, she was, it's pretty easy for her to win. <laughs> How old is she now? She's like I mean, she's been around 30s? a long time. She's got to be like late thirties. Yeah. yeah, really, thirties somewhere in there. I feel like she's been around twenty, twenty-five years. Thirty-six. Thirty-six years she's been around. Yeah. Wow, that's a long time to play tennis. <laughs> you usually, you're usually done at thirty. Who's usually like the mo like most tennis players are done around thirty. That's when they that's when they're fucking breaking. I don't down. think so. I don't think I'm, there's any truth to that. I used to watch a lot of tennis. I right, see what year. How old Billie Jean King was? She retired. Because she seemed like I an old lady to me. Forties is where they all. Yeah, retire. I would yeah. say the same thing. I would agree. Because you had like once they get all their endorsement deals, yeah. and everything else is set, they play into their forties just for just their for own. Yeah. She was forty for their mindset. She was what? Forty. Oh, ten years older than what your thing was. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like they, they're not going to win anything past thirty. They're done. It, it, it fucks. You can them up say that much. about anybody. <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're like uh, football players, except for presidency. That's the only one. Really, so football players don't win past thirty. Most of the most of them are out by the time that like running backs are done at thirty years old. Yeah, yes, but not quarterback. Doesn't it take quarterbacks? For, no. Yeah, quarterbacks. They're all it takes in their a, mid to late. 
You could. They like, age like a fine wine. Yeah, well, they can't be touched. They age like a person that's not allowed to be hit. The tennis players are more like running backs in NFL is what I should have said. None of this has added anything. Not one thing that you came up with. You get that adds. tennis elbow and you're done. You are done. You know, they're like running backs, basically. It's like it's foot. So uh, Donald Glover, Uh-oh. he, um, he up <laughs> Atlanta. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to be part of it. Oh. <laughs> he recently did an yeah. interview with the New Yorker um, magazine, Ooh. and he was talking about Chris Rock and saying that he's a little better than Chris because he had Chris to study, and now he's actively looking to um, for a black female to replace him. Um, and he also said that he's like Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like I gotta run out and get the New Yorker. <laughs> now you're a big uh, Donald Glover fan, yeah, right? I was gonna read this article, but my friend said there's like some spoilers in it, so I'm waiting. Until... Well, the spoilers for what? They're like there's a apparently the they mentioned of uh, yeah they mentioned a cameo in the first episode. That like, who was it? I didn't, re- I didn't. I'm not reading the article. Well, I, well, it's, just, it's just a cameo, man. <laughs> also, you, no cameos. Ever. Hold on, this old homeless man wants to talk. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> What are you worried about? A cameo? Let me tell you something, son. The first cameo I saw, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> now you got a dollar so I can buy me a taste. <laughs> I need some sweet, sweet wine. <laughs> what is wrong with you talking like that? It's a cameo. Chris. <laughs> I didn't realize I was. I came out of my mouth like that. It's a cameo, Did man. Did you watch the whole first season of Atlanta? Yeah, I loved it. I, I loved only watched it. half of it. I got to watch so the good. rest of it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's such a good show. I have the article here if you want to read it later. It's long. It's like 30 well, pages. Well, I'm just going to read it. The... <laughs> He's not an idiot. No, I'm just saying. It's like 30 pages. <laughs> it's massive. I read novels. He reads a book in like a day. Do you know I finished an encyclopedia set when I was... 11, <laughs> I want A through XYZ. <laughs> I always laugh at encyclopedias, and sometimes they're like, look, there's not enough to make one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would These put are them all together. Garbage letters. Yeah. I would always say to my parents, they go, can we get a set of encyclopedias? And they always said, no. There's nothing in there but junk. <laughs> you weren't intrigued by the, the nerdy white guy walking around in his your white room with a desk believe me i would fucking love to have encyclopedias i guess they're gone right the, the i guess they are them? yeah yeah Wikipedia. Wiki. do you know that you can't even buy a bible anymore they should just say oh it's my... all online that's you can't not buy okay a bible. what's yeah. happening to this country yeah. i actually said the other day i swear on my ipad dude have you seen this um i don't know it's like a smart bible uh-huh it's like an app. It talks to you? Dude, it is so strange. Because it's so weird because it's not... It doesn't see... It seems like something that we could have had like 20 years ago. So I don't really know why yeah. it's like being a big deal. But it's so There's strange. There's an infomercial on it, right? Yeah. And it's just... For, you know, it's obviously geared towards old people. Yeah. Um, for but their it, harder hearing. Yeah. I guess. Or just like you stick it in your car and then it'll just read Bible verses to you. Such but an old reference. But the old Garrett Morris just yelling <laughs> the Bible at you. Yeah. Well, one of the, it's one of the reasons these... Uh, there's, and the CD sets on it. There's a smart thing. This is why Terrestrial is struggling. Uh, because who <laughs> wants to listen to music when you could just have a talking Bible? <laughs> and some of these have been... Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's it. And uh, a lot of the commercial. people reading are the authors. <laughs> Wonder but, Bible. Walk in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The words of the Bible are a guiding light for the faithful. Now, the spoken word of God can be heard anytime. And God said. Anywhere. Let there be light. Introducing Wonder Bible, the incredible Bible that speaks. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Wonder Bible presents <laughs> the entire Old and mm. New Testaments in an unforgettable presentation. Simply turn on your Wonder Bible and a pleasant voice reads the book <laughs> to you. Just listen as the words on the page come alive. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word. <laughs> the Wonder Bible works. lets you listen to These the letters, gospels, psalms, <laughs> prophecies, no. and more. Easily skip to any book, chapter, or verse in seconds. Portable. Take it on the go. Listen while driving as a source of inspiration. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. For reflective contemplation. Then you will know the truth, and the truth 
will set you free. And spiritual Why does it have spiritual? to be a deep voice person doing it? Because <laughs> I think that the thing, voice this, of God. Is, this is what yeah. God sounds like. Trust in God. Kids love Wonder Bible. <laughs> Do they? The, the kids <laughs> looking at it like, what yeah. is this? <laughs> we have a TV. Yeah, you know? I mean, they're going <laughs> fucking wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These kids are just looking at it. Kids so love it. God. And I love the, the graphic of the sound emanating Bible. from it. Looks like the, uh, remember the device that used to have to scare bugs from your house? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a friend of mine was up for the uh, voiceover of this. Really? Who yeah. was it? Luis J. Gomez. <laughs> um, he almost got it. <laughs> Guys, all right, here's how it goes. We're going to have a roast, the Bible roast. <laughs> Uncomfortable dish. <laughs> Dr. Good Pepper. <laughs> well, Liev Schreiber, uh, he right now is, oh, well, he was on vacation with his rumored girlfriend. Um, vacation or gay <laughs> <laughs> um, She's 26. Her name is Taylor Neeson. She's former Miss Deco- South Dakota, so it's an official relationship mm. nice doing well for himself got himself a nice 26 year old <laughs> how old are you jen 26 okay you've been oh. perfect oh. for him that'd be great for a leaf driver you know that he's done our show and says he's a listener really yeah jen? He goes, yeah oh this could have been you <laughs> you blew it she's really gorgeous though yeah so are you jen come on this could have been you yeah, she's fantastic Look at him. He's finally happy. He does look happy. Yeah. He's finally happy after all these years. Well, attractive Ray Donovan people has done make it. people happy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I'd feel happy if I was him. I'm just happy right now looking at her. Yeah. If I was him, I'd send a picture to Dane Cook and go, what's the big deal, buddy? <laughs> You're not the only one who gets him young. <laughs> this could be you, Jen. Yeah. This could be your butt right oh there, my Jen. Oh, my God. <laughs> With a bad sunburn. You would look really good in that bathing suit. And that's true. She doesn't uh, get red like that. You playing frisbee? <laughs> she also won't go to the islands. And look, there where you should be, Chris, Costa Rica. Aww. Beautiful Costa Rica. When are you going? I'm not sure yet, but I believe I, I will end up there at some point. Uh, Doesn't er- every cruise go to Costa Rica? Yeah, yeah. Well, the lower class ones do. <laughs> um, we're bypassing the islands. We're going to Nicaragua, Costa Rica. <laughs> Um, so a friend of mine years ago was on a, a ship and they were in the port and they're like, you know, it's probably better that we don't get off, you know? Really? And then they heard all this gunfire at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my like, God. Oh, can we go out to sea, please? <laughs> Far out to sea. <laughs> Eric Nagel is here. Uh, it's Eric Nagel uh, st- uh, streams each week on the iHeartRadio app, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts. Who do you stay in touch with from the old show? Who do you? Um, Norton, Anthony, uh huh, um, Travis, time to time. Oh, and um, I'll hear from Sam once in a while. Just every once in a while. Every once in a while. Yeah, but uh, uh-huh. I think that's a oh Roland and Paul. You know, I still talk with them. So just about everybody. Almost everybody. Do you no. miss it, or you're glad you take this time for yourself? Um, it's a little of both. Yeah. Um, I didn't like the way things were handled. With this place, but and it's I'm not gonna lie, it's a little weird being here because it's been yeah. several months since I've uh, been in the studio, been in this building. Um, but uh, I've I've moved on mm-hmm. from that. I mean, you have to, right? Um, again, I wish I had the old mindset that you know of, where if you know a place does you wrong, you go across the street and, and kick their ass. But it's not that way anymore. No, so you gotta. Fine. This is uh, kind of forcing you to reinvent what you do and how you do it. Everybody's and reinventing all the time. You have to, because yeah. you can't just go and, and get a regular radio job anymore. So, uh, did you look around terrestrial or I, <laughs> I've had meetings with everybody who even owns a radio uh-huh. and I'm still having meetings. I'll get, um, cause I have an agent and everything and I'll still get calls saying they want you to come in to talk to them. And it's like, it's been five, six months, make an offer or why am I still coming here? Right. You know, but if you say no, then you don't have those meetings anymore. Right. Something will show up. But uh, um, I signed a, I can't, I signed a little deal. It's not a, a huge thing mm-hmm. that will get announced, I think, in the beginning of April. Oh, I'm looking um, forward to that. But uh, it's uh, baby steps. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, uh, the way everything runs now, it's like you. the days of getting the big contract and the new place are gone. You Gate have to culture. do multiple uh, projects in order to build up to the big thing. Right. So... 
Yeah, these are changing times. All because of this goddamn laptop right here, right there. <laughs> that one specifically? That, that one has changed everything. <laughs> Every business that's out there. Yeah. Movies, TV, books, doesn't matter what it is. Is there an unaffected business by computers, the internet? Not even no. farming. No. Not even farming. Yeah. No. It doesn't matter what it is. The internet has changed it. And if they can't compete, they'll, I mean, if they can't uh, uh, make their way into the marketplace, they'll just build a model that outdoes what the other people do. Mm -hmm. Like Amazon's making their own postal service. It's weird. Because they're going to cut out like DHL and FedEx and everything completely because of the negotiations and how difficult they were being. And Trump's fucking hard on for Amazon saying that they're not paying enough to right. the United States Postal Service. They're going to just make their own postal service. They've got the means and they're like, we're going to cut everything out and do it all ourselves. And that's when we get to Skynet and everything else taking over. Well, I'd be happy. You know, I mean, I love the Terminator. Um, <laughs> except for the ending, it didn't end the way I wanted. I wanted the machines to win. I was one of the few people that was crying at the end of the first one and cheering at that rat fink in the second one who turned on his fellow machines. You guys have all have been, uh, you know, even since evolving since Ron and Fez, you guys have all been kicking ass in all your uh, the side projects and, and other things that have uh, branched off from the Bennington show. And everyone has, uh, you know, their own project here and is and doing very well and successful. Did you ever think at this point now, like, you know, back in the day when you were doing radio, you had a different idea of what either your retirement would be or what your next step would be. Right. The way everything is now you ever think about that? Like when you feel that you're done here, what your next step is going to be? I'd probably just turn on the fucking laptop the way, you know, Anthony did. You know what I mean? Like nobody, when we used to go off the air, we were off the air and never heard from again. Right. Now you're just like, hey, everybody, it's me. You know what I mean? Like uh, Facebook Live is very close to radio or TV or anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very, very strange. Yeah. yeah. So you won't make the same kind of money, but also there'll be no reason to retire for anybody because you could just say i'm just going to do the show lighter from the beach you know what i mean you'll just be at the beach or you're fishing and you're like i call this the let's go fishing show hey everybody <laughs> is that a bass i don't know hold on there's a kid's foot just went by you know, you know it's just that thing will happen where it's going to be like, like almost everybody's running a show right at the same time yeah i, I mean every comedian i know now has a show yeah. yeah, I don't know how big they are or how small they are. Does that bug you as a as a radio guy? Where you know, like, if I was younger and I'm trying to figure out how to get into radio, the podcast world is is a godsend because you get to start and learn as you go. But the fact that you know every comic has a podcast, and then every other person gets a group of people together and starts a podcast, you know, and a lot of them are not successful or or even entertaining. But it, but it does, do you feel that it kind of diminishes what? You, well, here you here's build? here's what I mean. It doesn't hurt me, but anybody who wanted to be on the same path couldn't because I put two kids through school. Try doing that with a podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're like, hey, it's so great. I have a podcast. I have access. Yeah, but who do you make money? You know what I mean? Like, I literally lived a life of the bills are paid, and we have homes and cars, you know what I mean? I don't know if anybody's going to be able to do that. Look, Jen looks so depressed. <laughs> Jen, I I'll just change that. Jen, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. <laughs> Jen's going to live off that Liv Schreiber money. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's what you Seriously, need to do. Dude. Go for it. I think you can make it happen. Ooh. <laughs> I, know, I know you could. So that's the, you know, that's the downside of it. Like, yeah. yes, you get to cut out a lot of things, but you don't have a, a, you know, a steady gig. And that's the great thing about Sirius XM. It's, it's a real gig. Yeah. Ant figured out a way to do it, you know, and he's happy with it. Um, but Jim stayed in this, you know, right. format. And they're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's doing well. I think it, when you're uh, unfortunately put in that position, um, it's you know it's it is sink or swim at at this point. So that you got to constantly keep moving, and every little bit helps for what you're trying to build in right. order to get to your the place that you want to be. So right. by doing all these little projects and working, you know, uh, a little bit here at this place and then this place, that's pretty much the new normal now. Yeah, it's the gig culture. When you have the one job where it's like, I'm just doing my show at this one place for four hours and then I'm done. Yeah. Doesn't 
really exist anymore. No, that's gone. Yeah. And even the stand-ups, they're just constantly promoting themselves 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. You know, you wouldn't just, you would just be like, yeah, I'm I'm playing Toledo next week. <laughs> I got to be there at nine tonight. You know, they're just constantly promoting that. Right. And that's what their podcasts are just really promotions right. for them traveling. But, you know, Scott Shannon didn't have to go around the country <laughs> setting up. Hey, everybody, mm-hmm. give me $10 tonight. I'm here. You know, <laughs> yeah. he, could, he could go in and focus and do his show. All right, we got to wrap this up, Jen. This week's Dish segment is presented by Dish, ranked number one in customer service nationally by J.D. Power and their customers. Dish tuned in to you. To learn more, call 1-844-CALL-DISH or go to dish.com. Eric Nagel, thanks so much, my friend. Thanks, guys. Are you guys uh, still doing your Big Brother coverage with the celebrity one? Well, yeah, that one's all closed down. We'll probably start up again in the summer if Vito doesn't get on the show. When do you send your stuff out? I'm going to be doing it in the next week. I'm going to be doing my audition video for Big Brother. Why are you waiting a whole week? Well, I mean, I got I mean, within the next week, it's going to be sent out. Do it this weekend. This weekend? Make okay. it happen. Let us see it before you send okay. it out. Okay. We'll even put it online to see if anybody's got a better idea. Okay. But I think if we put it online, it won't, it won't, they won't pick it. Why? Because they, they're very serious about, they, they don't want like, you every every cast member that's they de- just had Amorosa on there. Why would they sense. want somebody who comes from a, a, a an already yeah. established fan base that's getting a push to bring more people to watch the show? I'm going to read the guidelines and make sure. Okay. I want my best well, I'm pulling anyway. for you, man. I think you definitely you would be good on that. Icom? I think this. He's no. he's out first week. <laughs> oh, I just want Vito to be the guy in the robe that just either doesn't participate or just mm. has like a bullhorn and yells at everybody. That'll be him. Mm-hmm. I'll wear the HOH robe the whole week when I win my HOH. It's Eric Nagel, iHeartRadio app, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, wherever you get your podcast. Twitter is at E Rock Radio. Thanks so much, my friend. Thank, Thank you so you much Rock. for having me. I really do appreciate it. All right, we'll see you again soon. Yes. Bennington. The Bennington Show. Um, coming in in just a couple of moments. Our buddy Pete Lee. And from what I understand, he went to the wrong building. <laughs> Pete. Pete. He probably went and tried to get into the Tonight Show again. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that hilarious, though? The wrong building? That's the funniest shit I've ever heard in my life. I mean, it does all look the same around here. But he's been here before. I can <laughs> no. see if he's never been here. And he's just standing in the wrong lobby. But he was just here for the Nikki Glazer's Unmasked. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I just found out that I'm going to be at the stand hosting tonight. I had no idea. Oh, nice. Is it? Yeah. Who's in this show tonight? Do you know, Vito? Both you and uh, Chris feel awkward when you switch places. Oh, Ron, I know who's in there tonight. It's Jessica Curson. <laughs> oh, great. Janine Garofalo. Wow. Nikki Glazer. Jesus Christ. Hold Whoa, on. Ladies it's, night. It's me and the ladies. Pete Lee, Chris Stefano, and Mark Norman. Oh, we got to get Chris Stefano and Mark Norman on this show. Yeah, that, that's a this. fucking rocking show. That's a really great show. I, oh, and then is to, when is the hour with the legend, Rich Voss? I think that's Thursday. It's tomorrow night. Yeah, if you get the opportunity to see that, because I believe he's this is for his prepping for his special. Nice. And Pete Lee will be there too. Pete Opening Lee's, for him. Yeah, Pete he's Lee. very very good friends with Voss and Barney. Well, Pete Lee seems like a person that would be easy to be friends with. I don't know. I heard that the three of them were having sex. Wow. Yeah. Who told you this? I just assumed it started. Oh. It. <laughs> <laughs> I had a jealousy. <laughs> I wanted to be me and Voss and Pete Lee. <laughs> baba, 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 boom. Baba, 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 boom. Uh, Chris Stanley, before Pete gets here, did you have something you wanted to get off your chest? You said uh, you had something that you said was nagging on you because he goes like this. I can't believe it that you brought in Nagel and I've been nagged all day. I'm like, well, what is it? I'll give you the chance. I'm shocked that YouTube has uh, said that 
Hey, Logan. look who it is. Oh. It's Pete Lee. It's Pete, Pete Lee. Lee, everybody. Pete Lee, everybody. Come on Pete in, Pete. Lee's here. Come on in, Pete. We're playing his new song. Well, they don't We're have a new song for Pete. Pete Lee. Pete Lee. Right, he goes to the wrong building. Oh, my God. <laughs> I totally went to the wrong building. I was like, hi, I'm here to check in for uh, Bennington's show on Sirius XM. And they're like, we have no idea. I was like, all right. What building were you in? Uh, the one across from this one, uh, like if, if you're in Del Frisco's, you'd be looking at it. Yeah. Um, not the Fox News building. Right. But It um, looks exactly the same. There's like eight buildings that look the same here. Yeah. And I was so confident when I walked up, <laughs> which I normally am not. So I wasted that confidence. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm you're going to second idiot. guess yourself for weeks. The whole, yeah. Gail and I were up front yesterday and she goes, if you were a young kid and you were told this is a building that you will work in, what did you think you would be doing for a living? Because <laughs> yeah. it doesn't look like radio. No, not at all. You know? No, not at all. This looks like like your your whole day would be like numbers, 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 <laughs> numbers, numbers. Or else, uh, this, is CIA, this is the CIA. Yeah, we killed that guy. Thank you. <laughs> it like does look like something dangerous take place i like how the cia is polite <laughs> they are nice people they have I, manners <laughs> i know a lot of people who work for the cia because we lived in washington mm -hmm. and most of them was what you would probably call a hitman wow and they're just regular people and then sometimes they went out and killed people <laughs> that i kind of want to do that job yeah it's fun I, I know a guy, he's an older guy, and he killed uh, Kennedy. He was one of the guys you that killed Kennedy. You know him? Yeah. <laughs> what and, and Mary Jo Kopechnik, <laughs> uh, the Ted Kennedy one. They're going to make a movie about her, the girl that Ted Kennedy drowned. I feel like, you know how people say that everybody needs to wait tables for at least a year? Yeah. I feel like everybody needs that job for a year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just so you have more empathy in life. Right. <laughs> well, they, you know, there's a lot of people who say that you should just be forced military. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I was younger, I thought that was a bad idea. But now I'm like, it's great that I passed it. I'm like, yeah, they could. And if you wanted to get out of it, you could just go out and help poor people. Or, yeah, they're you know what I mean, like they don't, they're not all like combat jobs. They're, you know, some of them are just like serving in food. some other way. Serving yeah. food to people. <laughs> so you also get that waiting job. <laughs> Have you ever been a waiter? Uh, no, I was a I was actually a cook in college. Yeah. Um. And I'm ter I'm a terrible cook, but they just needed a cook. And they're yeah. like, can you cook? And I was like, no. And they're like, you're hired. And then this woman who was a bad cook taught me how to cook. And what did I had, you normally cook? Uh, it was like beef stroganoff, yeah. like ma like giant vats of mashed potatoes. Yeah. Um, on the weekends, I'd be like the griddle cook with the eggs and the pancakes and all that kind of stuff. Did you get good at that short order cooking? Yeah, I yeah. got I got good at it in like a like a month. But that month, yeah, all my roommates were like, "Oh, Pete's cooking. We're eating cereal. <laughs> this is terrible." Uh, so like, that's the only food service job that I've ever had. Could you get up and make yourself a nice breakfast now? I could make you guys a nice breakfast okay. right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like to we'll, cook for others. We'll we'll do that. So well, let's brunch. Oh. Let's just make that would be great. I don't know why we can't brunch during weekdays. That's my thing. Thing now i want a weekday brunches wherever i go i actually do that uh nikki and i do that we meet up for like 1 30 p.m weekday brunch because you it. both sleep in so late yeah well now she's got the show here so she's got to wake up at like nine <laughs> now she's done with you yeah she, face she, she's she really, got a radio show we're gonna do brunch at 7 p.m yeah have you done her new show yet? No, I haven't. Uh, I've no. been out on the road and stuff like that, but I've been following it on Instagram and texting her every morning, like, congrats, even though it's the third day. She's having fun with it, though? Yeah, she's having a, a really great time uh, with it. I'm here to promote her show. You up, yeah. Dickie Laser. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm here for. Well, you know, it's funny because I remember when Nick DiPaolo was looking so forward to working with, and then last night I went and did his show, and he's like, uh, it's a grind, isn't it, Ronnie? <laughs> every day they expect something new and it is true you're just filling this hole every day of your life and then the next day it's an empty hole <laughs> you're just like huh let's think uh what's in the news what do you want to talk about everybody <laughs> <laughs> and then you go to a party and people are like isn't it fun to be in entertainment and you're yeah. like yeah it's filling a hole yes yeah, so i'm filling an empty <laughs> spiritual hole that i've had for quite some time um all right this is a very strange call, but I definitely want to take this. Sarah in Maine. Sarah in Maine. Sarah, what do you have? Uh, well, you name it. D, all the above. Uh-huh. <laughs> like what? 
Oh, let's see. If one more of my um, frickin' privileged hippie friends starts whining about their white people problems, I am going to stab them. Sarah, hold on. It says here that you haven't left your house since September. No, I have not. You're, um, are you agoraphobic? No, I was born with chemical sensitivity, and as chemicals in the environment increase 100,000-fold every year, so of my symptoms, my pain, and my isolation. Yeah. Everybody's just coated in, you know, all these toxic synthetic chemicals now. Ugh. You know, I, I was like I a rowdy shower. bitch. I toured, I followed the Grateful Dead back in the early 80s, you know. Uh, I stopped going to fish shows in 1986. Right. <laughs> You know, like, I D all the above. So do you think you'll ever be able to get outside again? I can be outside. See, that's, yeah. that's the misnomer. I've kind mm. of been thinking about renaming this illness because uh, they call it environmental illness. There is nothing in the environment that I react to. It's synthetic chemicals. I can drink river water. I'll take you down the river and we can do shot for shot of Mm-mm. river water and see who shits their pants first. Me. Let's do I, it. I, I can yeah. roll around in a patch of ragweed that there isn't an animal I react to. But as soon as you put a pesticide or a neurotoxin, which is perfume and clone and fabric softener and Febreze on something, I react to it. Now, can you do you do stuff like buy like B, BPFA, whatever that is, free plastic? Like, do you have to buy products that have that are chemical free? Pretty much. And I mainly use glass. And I have a process of decontaminating things with a very specific vegetable enzyme and ozone. Mm-hmm. I have ozonators. Like I have to, I have, I have to ozonate my paper towels and toilet paper outside before I can use them because of the chemicals and the perfume and them. Right, is this weird that I find this to be hot? Is that a, is that an odd thing? No, that's that, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, very sexy. Yeah, it really is sexy. Yeah, I, it could oh, be baby, even the CDC ain't got nothing on me. Uh, <laughs> it could be even sexier, like if she rocked like a hazmat suit and you yes. went on a date. You know, yeah. like like you just see her cute face through that little square <laughs> bubble yeah. in the front of it. So, like baby, I, I had to buy my own laboratory grade Tyvek to make an ozone tent out of because the shit they sell in the hardware stores is coated with anti-static chemicals. Mm-hmm. Basically, fabric softener. Wow. What now, are you? So, are you just ordering everything from Amazon, or is that does that have too many chemicals? Here we go. Here's my other fucking nightmare. Okay. I cannot use. He set her off. <laughs> I can't use computers and cell phones because of the solders, adhesives, the chemicals, and it turns out I now have been diagnosed with EMF sensitivity. Thanks so fucking much. Like I keep looking up at the sky, going, "Are you fucking serious?" Okay. No paper, no fucking computers. I can't leave my house. You know what? Really, what do you want? You know, I, I what I want is a 100% medical silicone grade um, 38, just so I can use it as a pacifier at night to suck on. <laughs> I love uh, that she's like I want yeah. I, I want to die, but I want a, spe- a special gun that won't right. hurt me. I don't want to feel sick when I'm dying. You uh, know, I don't want to die. See, that's the thing. Like, I am impassioned. I am. I there's so much that I want to do. Sarah, do you live alone? Uh, no. Luckily, I live with my mother. Yeah, <laughs> and she um, has to go through all kinds of stuff just to make the house safe with you, right? Oh no, nobody can come in my house. Uh, nobody can come in my house. I can't go in anybody's house. I can't go in buildings. My doctor doesn't even make me come into the office anymore because of my medical condition. Um, my therapist, who I found um, because I freaking needed one, mm-hmm. he has. I said, I don't want to talk to anybody who isn't familiar with multiple chemical sensitivity. Turns out, great, she has it too. Okay, so she comes over here to meet with me in my backyard and has to keep cutting my our therapy session short because it makes her so sick to be outside at my house. Really? Because of the fabric softener, the car exhaust, the lawnmowers, the fucking yeah. barbecues, you name it, D, all the above. The tumor farmers are fucking hard at work. I, I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. My goal verge. is get a small piece of land that I found a company that builds 10 by 10 cottages for people with this medical condition. They're 23,000 bucks. I want to get two of them <laughs> because they're 10 by 10. And I want to find somebody else with this medical condition to go live in the middle of the woods with me. You know who could be a uh, better call Saul's brother? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got the same stuff. He does, doesn't Have he? Have you ever seen that show better call Saul? Um, a couple of times. And you're right. Yeah. It is exactly that. 
I mean, there are millions of us out there, and the World Health Organization estimates by the year 2025, 45% of the population in the United States alone is going to be diagnosed with some form of, of environmental illness. So while I'm lying on the floor puking into a garbage can because my neighbor needs soft fucking underwear, I look up at my mother and I'm like, no, really, Mom, I'm cutting edge. No, no, I'm cutting edge. You're on edge. the edge. Yeah, you're making things happen. A trend is starting. Oh, yeah, uh, well, people would go to my GoFundMe. I just want to get the fuck out of here, start a community for people with chemical sensitivity, and then I want to do something. Once I'm stable and I can really start doing work, I want to start an animal shelter for women who are fleeing domestic violence to take care of their pets while they're in transition. So yeah, that's, that's always, really great. Yeah, yeah, I was worried what happens to the, to the puppies. Well, this woman called me the other day. I haven't heard from her in years, and she's have, she's in the middle of cataclysm. Her ex crap out of her. She's taking a restraining order. She's threatened to kill her. She doesn't want to leave her house because he hates his, her cats, and she knows he will show up and kill her cat. Right. You know, like, you know, so, like, I'm so like, I can't do this, you know, <laughs> um, you know too much. But, you know, there, my story is insane. I'm like Oprah Winfrey's wet fucking dream. Have you have you thought about starting a podcast? Because I'm like I'm not, like and I'm not being sarcastic. Like I'm fascinated by you right now, and then you could do it from home, and then people could hear about this. I would love to if I could figure out how to do it, but I can't leave my house and I can't use computers. Hmm. Yeah. I, I actually I hired somebody to do some research for me. I mean, it cost me a fortune, but you know, I tried to I actually tried to have her try and find the fucking like telephone to to internet like service that would just automatically stuff up you know what i mean so but I are you are you making this call from a wall phone yes yes okay well, and a kind of phone so emf phone as well that's plugged into the wall phone <laughs> all right so people want to talk to you want to take any calls or absolutely let's do this hey right. <laughs> now uh chris i'm going to make sure because this is the new thing and we don't do this do i do hold ready uh, all right, so you click the call you want to go to. Yes. And then click Fader 2 on the upper right corner. So, first of all, do I have to keep her on Fader 2? She's fine where she is. She's on Fader 1. So, right. so, so can I like, just, so, before we take some calls, can I just tell people who want to see some more of this, just to go to my GoFundMe? Yeah, go ahead. Give it's, it up. It's Creations with an S, Haven. Creations Haven. Yeah, Creations Haven. Um, and, and it explains all about the coma and all the shit that happened. And all of these calls that you're taking are from analog phones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the only way. I'm not going to that one. I'm going to uh, six. All right. Um, and then just hit the drop on that, or will they both drop, Chris? I believe, I think uh, hit fader two again Well, uh, after we're done okay. with him. Uh, Tom, Tom, you're on the air with uh, Sarah. And Pete Lee, her hopefully soon to be boyfriend. Yeah, I'm single. Let's yeah. do this. <laughs> Ronnie Ron, Pete, million bucks. Matt, thanks. Um, um, yeah, I don't believe this lady one bit. I think she's just trying to uh, get the money for her GoFundMe page. I mean, if you remember Better Call Saul with his brother, it was all psychological. There was absolutely nothing physical. There was no physical. Well, that's not necessarily problem. true. We were always went back and forth on that show of whether he had a disease or it was psychological. Go to the Chemical Injury Network and check it out. All right, no, yeah, I mean, anybody can make a website and write a bunch of crap online. Doesn't mean it's true. I'm just fader two. Okay. I did. Nothing right. happened. Uh, hit drop. All right. So fader two, then drop. Yeah, select the call, then hit fader two. Yeah, all right. All right, let's... Now that drops her, dude. Yeah, I... You see? Computers are bad. Yeah. Computers are really bad, and we need an old timey nineteen fifty switchboard. Just run across the room, too. I, I don't know. I was gonna go to the back of that room. Through that window? <laughs> 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 oh no! <laughs> He's gonna smash through it like Bruce Willis and Die Hard. Yeah, that was a weird moment with him. He's it, got a, a, a high stress level. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Is it weird that I miss Sarah? Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I do I too. I, I wanted Sarah to, to keep her on for a while. I liked, I thought maybe, you know, but you know, what are you going to tell? Sarah. For all we know, somebody came by, 
sprayed her with bug spray, and that's the end of it. Well, <laughs> check out Creations Haven. I love Sarah. I feel like we have our own, like, John B. McElmore from S-Town. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah makes me feel sane, because if somebody does spray Febreze on their clothes, I can actually smell it. It drives my sinuses crazy. Uh, at the laundromat, I use that, like, gentle detergent. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, like, on the very mild end of her spectrum. I had a producer that would pass out if anybody had Febreze. Really? Mm-hmm. He passed out on the floor. He sprayed it. And he said, oh, yeah, did Chris, did you spray him with it one d- time? Dave sprayed it with him, and then, yeah, he went down like a like a bag and, of bricks. And he stayed down. Oh, yeah. Wow, move over Ambien. Yeah. That's not, like, it I is. have trouble sleeping. I, I wish that somebody could, oh, oh God, yeah, eight it's, hours. It's the new date rape drug. It's Febreze. <laughs> So you, uh, but you're very sensitive to anything I, like that. I'm very sensitive to chemicals and whatnot, and um, I have a deviated septum and sleep mm. apnea. Um, yeah. I'm like the thinnest guy with sleep apnea, so <laughs> my, I have like really terrible sinuses. Like, yeah. like I was on a plane, I, I rode home from LA yesterday, and there was this Indian family next to me, and like they just reeked like they, they ate a ton of curry, and right. my sinuses the whole time on the plane were freaking out. So that's got to be tough to live in New York because there's always at least one strange cooker in every building in New York. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's my downstairs neighbor, so <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. I, like, like I open up my closet where I keep my jackets, and it's just Curryville. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, I miss my old neighbor that just smoked pot, and then I, I just smelled cool. <laughs> He's but, a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, but now I have tandoori jackets. I have uh, a neighbor that gets high like that, and sometimes I'm leaving, I'll just go and smell his door. I'm like, oh, God. (laughs) Can't. Want to. Can't. (laughs) Uh, Hey, John. John, what's up? Hey, buddies. Hey. Um, What do you call it? I wonder, listening, uh, while it's on hold, uh, I wonder if the lady got this idea from Better Call Saul. But um, anyways... I used to do tree work, and part of the job was, like, three months a year, you had to spray pesticides, and talking, you know, it'd shoot, like, 60 feet up to spray the right. trees. And um, it was bad stuff, like Seven and Malathion and Saigon. And, yeah. But they came out, some of the stuff really smelled, so they came out with this stuff, and you put in a tank called Mask It, and it made it smell like oranges, and there'd always be someone who'd get the spray on them and go, oh, I had to go to the hospital, I itch all over. And some of those same people, we told them, they're like, oh, that smells like oranges. What is it? And we're like, oh, it's an all-natural new stuff we're trying, you know. Yeah. We lie to the people. Just lie to them as you're <laughs> spraying them down with this. Yeah, exactly. It's so, and, or people would say... <laughs> I was young and stupid, you know, so I'd be standing there with no shirt on, getting covered with this stuff. It, it's pumping out 600 pounds of pressure, so yeah. it's, you know. You're just basically standing in the middle of Agent Orange. Yeah, pretty much. They used to, and, uh, when I was a kid, they would go around and spray, and it looked like there was cannons on the back of a truck, uh-huh. and they would shoot this smoke and fog out of it, and then all the kids oh, in the yeah. neighborhood would run, run and chase it. You <laughs> know, you told me about yeah. that. And then only, and I had never heard that before. I didn't know that was a thing. Then a week later, I saw the movie Tree of Life. And in that movie, the Everybody kids are running then, in yeah. like the. What was that smoke, though? What, what... It was some kind of terrible pesticide was like that was pesticide supposed cloud. to kill every mosquito <laughs> in the neighborhood. And all the kids would just run. Hey! Not only would they run, they'd be yelling like it was the funnest thing ever. Did you never get bit by a mosquito? <laughs> no, they would be there later that night. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so it didn't just get into your, yeah, your soul. And... Yeah, it would still be there today. Yeah. Mosquito lands on me and dies. <laughs> That's a bit. You remember? You remember when car exhaust smelled good? You're oh like, yeah. Oh, I love that smell. And now we're like, oh, that's cancer. Right. <laughs> yeah. If something smells good, it's probably cancerous. Yeah. You know, it's probably going to kill you. I do like the smell of marijuana. Well, I used to. I hate new skunk weed marijuana. Yeah. It just smells awful. But marijuana used to be a great smell when it was weaker. I, I don't think I've ever known anything but skunky smelling weed. Chris, do you remember pre skunk? I remember pre skunk, like really, yeah, I know, like this, we would seeds in it, yeah. And it smelled great. Oh, yeah, I love it. Now it's, um, like, new weed smells kind of chemically. There's, there's a chemical tinge to any, right. like, really high grade. Uh, 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 it's paraquat. You're actually smoking paraquat <laughs> right now. <laughs> 
I don't know that word, so I'm just assuming it's parakeet. <laughs> yes, it is. it's a parakeet. Well, there was this d- d- thing that the, uh, they said the U.S. government did it, was go around and smell it uh, and spray this toxic shit all over marijuana plants. This was like back in the 70s. And then people would do it, and then their kids would have club feet. You know what I mean? You would smoke right. it, and you would take it out of the next generation. Fucking Sins of the father. Yes, the sins of the father, if you will. Um, <laughs> club feet's just such a funny. <laughs> yeah, like it sounds cuter than it is. Yeah, it really. Like, Aw, little but, baby with a club foot. Like, yeah. like, have you met Tony? He's got club feet. <laughs> like, he goes to the club every night. <laughs> it's actually just Gucci shoes. Yeah, club feet is like a inner city footloose. Yeah. Um, Are you going to One Oak? Everybody uh, there has club feet. All right, we got Sarah back. Sarah. Oh, good. Hey. Thank God. We thought maybe you passed out. Ah, no, now I'm pissed. I, 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 can I, I got a couple of things to say to these people who think I'm full of shit. All of them do. All of them, none of them believe you. All right, well, how about this? There's one thing I've learned. I've been having migraines since I was three years old related to food additives and food fucking coloring. Okay. Chemicals in the environment increase, so have my symptoms. Out of the 500,000 chemicals in everyday use in the United States, only 3,000 of them are allowed in the European Union because they actually test them for human safety. Number two, whether you believe in evolution or creation, either we evolved over millions of years on this planet with the same things here for food, air, water, and medicine, and in the past hundred years, we've taken them into the laboratories, mutated them, changed them, and demented them, mainly under the guise of profit and greed. On an evolutionary scale, scale, there is no fucking way we can catch up. Number two, if you believe in creation, God created our bodies and everything we're supposed to use for food, air, water, and medicine, and at the same time in the past hundred years, we've taken them into the laboratories, mutated them, changed them, and demented them under the guise of profit and greed. Is that not a fucking sin against God? So when people say that chemicals aren't fucking harmful, I just like to know, what is the rise in cancer, MS, all these degenerative diseases, asthma, fucking the commercials on TV, every fucking disease under the mankind. Sarah? God, I heard a commercial for cancer insurance. Sarah. Now it's like a prerequisite that we're all going to get fucking cancer, so buy insurance. That's Sarah, bullshit. Honey. Hold on. Or tumor farming. Let, let me help you out here because I've worked in radio a long time. You're going to catch more flies with sugar. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, everything you're saying might be right. But the thing is, you want people to go to you and go to your GoFundMe. Yeah. You don't You don't want to be yelling at them. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. I just, you know, I, when I spend four days a week throwing up into a waste paper basket because my neighbors need fabric softener and barbecues. Yes. We'll say I'm full of shit. It just gets to you a little bit. Oh, yeah. Pete has that. You always have to deal with hecklers in your business. Yeah, right, always have to deal with hecklers. Yeah. Now, do you have stock lines for them? Um, I actually, I don't. I don't yeah. really <laughs> use stock lines. I like, you know, I don't come to your job yeah, and, yeah. you know, whatever. But um, <laughs> <laughs> she could be like, I don't come to your house and use fabric softener. Right. That could be good. Yeah. But still add the dick in the mouth thing. Yeah. It's like, that's, right. that's kind Knock of the, the part dick that... out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't come over to your house with fabric softener and put a dick in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. There you that's, go. That's perfect combo of those things I, i'm raw you know I, you are raw you yeah. are you my are. doctor told me 10 years well back in 2003 to move out west that people with this condition do better out there so i did i was living in the high mountain desert in west texas and you know it was a nightmare rattlesnakes javelinas well mountain lions you know but there was no people one person per square mile mm. And, you know, and then the fires came. I don't know if you remember the fires. Oh, do I remember the fires? Of, yeah. Uh, yeah, and they're evacuating yesterday. the area. And what am I going to do with my chemical sensitivity? Go to a Halliburton retention center? No. So I'm out there that. building chicken cages for all my birds. And I've got T-posts in the stock pond. My theory is I'm going to put on a mask, attach my chickens to the T-posts, and let the fire ro- roll through and rebuild. Barbecue. Right. That's my plan, right? And the C-130s fly through. Dropping uh, fire retardant on the whole. Yeah, you know what that uh, is, you yeah. know. Jeez. The See, last thing I remember is Thanksgiving 2011. I woke up from a coma in 2013. I weighed 75 pounds. I was in heart failure, kidney mm, failure, liver failure. Tiny. I had to learn to walk, talk, read, and write again. My mother brings me back up here to Massachusetts, and it starts all over again. Mm. So even if you think I'm crazy, just just help me out and send me off into the woods, and I will shut up. <laughs> uh, what is uh, your uh, GoFundMe again? Creations Haven. 
You know, when you really get going, you remind me of everybody that Pete Lee has had a relationship with <laughs> That's true. in the past. <laughs> All right. Is that why I'm turned on? <laughs> yes. I'm like, is she, so- yeah, she sounds like my ex is like, I, every part of me is like, oh, I could help her. Yeah. I just want to help. I just want to, my, my therapist actually has a blog, uh, mm-hmm. a blog post that he makes me read over and over that, called Nobody Needs Your Help. <laughs> and so right now I'm going, I'm going, Sarah doesn't need my help. She over doesn't and need over. my help. Do you, well, um, I, I really kind of do. And even if it was, <laughs> I really do. <laughs> have permission to give Pete my help home phone number uh, and even if you just called me pete with some good jokes and had a drink with me yeah. over the phone all right oh, I'm, nice. I'm, I like that. I'm, all right sarah i'm gonna put you on hold okay okay uh so you can give out your home phone number so i'm dating yes this is good i'm totally dating i like this i want to know what kind of drink she wants to have because i don't know if like i wonder if she drinks whiskey or something like that but she's she doesn't like febreze or yeah i think that th- there's a purity maybe to she alcohol. distills her own you yeah. know, or make some organic some bathtub yeah. gin that she makes on her own. <laughs> no, you're not in a relationship right now. Pete? I'm not in a relationship. I'm dating. Uh, I'm exhausted from dating. So much yeah. sex. It's, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's too much. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, I, I actually I am dating. Um, I went. I had kind of a weird uh, curb your enthusiasm moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was flying out to hang out with a girl last week, and um, I was manscaping, and yeah. my razor slipped, and uh, and I like it like. It looked like a I, my dick had a fight with a badger, and uh, and this was this was the first time that I was I was like officially hooking up with her, and so I just had to explain it to her, and luckily she was really cool, and she's like, look, I she's like I can I'll she goes let me take a look at it is what she did, and she's yeah. like, oh yeah, that's clearly those are clearly scrapes and not an self mutilation. Yeah, Q curb <laughs> theme. <laughs> yeah, I'm a cutter, but only on my dick. Uh, <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> So, will you give Sarah a call? I will, and maybe even visit sometime. You know, yeah. I would, I would visit, but I would want to make sure that I was really, you know, uh, dechemicaled. Right. Um, I would eat clean for like ten days just mm-hmm. to come over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got to squ- uh, scrub you down with a wire brush. Yeah, Karen Silkwood style. <laughs> <laughs> you get the Silkwood, and then you get in here. Well, she's uh, she's taken on modern America, though, right? The technology, yeah, I'm not a big fan. No, she doesn't like it. The sad yeah. thing is that, like, because I've I've always been really hard on myself that I'm not as smart as most of my friends, but like, I I have a theory that you know intelligence is actually misery, mm-hmm. and um, uh, my brother's a genius, and he did so many drugs that he said that he killed so many brain cells that he's now happy. And, Finally, uh, at the point where he could. Yeah, so yeah. listening to her, I was like, she just needs to kill more. She needs to kill off her brain cells right. until she's happy. Lean back like you were. I think that right now he looks like, uh, I'm looking at Chris Stanley, uh, a huskier version <laughs> of the Walking Dead hero. No, no smile, Chris. But you know who I'm talking about? The guy who runs yeah. Walking Dead for everybody? I don't know the, the sh- um, like, I don't know his name, but I know who. Yeah. The guy that they interview was, afterwards? I don't know if that, because I've never watched the show, but oh. I saw the, the Saints. Remember that Saints movie mm-hmm. where they were in Boston? Yeah. And- Boondock. Huh? Boondock, Boondock Saints. Saints. Yeah. Just just put main character. He's like the main dude. Why can't just you like find the main this, guy? Pluto? I think his name's Gary or something. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, put Gary in just there. Just put Gary, Gary the fucking hero. Gary the zombie. Z- zombie Gary. I didn't think he was a zombie. I thought everybody else was. That's oh, yeah, not, he kills it's him. not Come Gary. Come on, that's not him. That's it's not The main looks, guy from Walking Dead. Just put the, main Norman character. Re- Norman Reedus? Yes, Norman, Norman Reedus. Yeah, I knew his Norman name Reedus. the whole time? No, yeah. Now lean back, Chris. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's a husky yeah, version. Yeah, close your eyes a little. Do, yeah. Oh, that's, oh it. that's it. Get the squint going. Yeah, get that squint going. Yeah. Look at it. Now look yeah. at Pete. Now look at that. Oh, yeah. You look need to it. let your hair grow a little longer. Can you do an arm motion like you're like you're shooting a crossbow? Yeah, do that. Oh, yeah. oh. oh wow. Yeah. Now wow. pull really? your shirt up and let us see your nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> he never shows off his nipples. No, he's very... He says they're pie- he's, Pie plate size. He's very private about yeah. his nipples, oh, which wow. is weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have <laughs> tiny ones. You have woofers. I have tweeters. Yeah. <laughs> you have very small nipples? Yeah, I do. I have smaller yeah. ones. Yeah. Did your mom ever do acid? Is that what happened? Or? Mm. Um, I don't Clubfoot? think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say I, my I have Christine. club nipples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my Christine, they say, has the biggest nipples in comedy. 
I um, feel like I've heard him mention that yeah, before he's like the, on his the nipples, show. He, we had him in one day. He had his, he took a frisbee and could not cover up one of his nipples <laughs> with an entire frisbee. And I'm talking standard frisbee. I'm not saying one of those little small ones that they had for a while. But that's odd, isn't it? That we could take the full gauntlet of comedy nipples. Of comedy nipples. Yeah. yeah. That's uh <laughs> Like I think that that's how you should pick headliners. Like it should go from smallest to biggest nip. Okay. Rich Voss so, would be like, I got the biggest nipples. I'm the headliner. <laughs> <laughs> big headliner right now, Ron. Big, big headliner. Why am I going on third? <laughs> because it's a showcase club yeah. and there is no headliner. <laughs> Everyone's doing 15. Rich calls me and it'll be like a, an 11 second phone call and he'll be like, P. Lee, Rich Voss, just want to let you know I'm my headliner. <laughs> Click. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. He's um, hilarious. Yeah, I feel like uh, nipples of comedians is a good Instagram. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, or like, could you guess the, if you just see the nipple, could you match it I with think the comic? most, I like, Right yeah. now, I think I could recognize Tim Dillon's nipples. You if think I had so? To. I think I could just look at him and go, "That's Tim's." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd be gay but harsh. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Tweak me, all right. Can I just say this: Is he gay? Because I never see him being very gay. Yeah, he's never with a dude. <laughs> never and never talking about dudes. Yeah, I feel like he's just doing it for show business cred. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I definitely when I first met him. When he made reference to being gay, it's like the reaction I normally give when I hear someone who I think is gay says, like, my wife. <laughs> like, he said it, and I was like, what? Like, I just kind of was like, sorry, I just thought you said, all right, nothing. I'll just. But I've never been with him where he goes, you know who's a good looking dude? <laughs> and most comedians will say who's a good looking dude. Yeah. You know? He, the only thing he does that's a little gay is that he'll <laughs> shake your hand and he does it like he, he leaves his hand like a little limp. Oh, like yeah. goes a little soft. Fish, dead fish. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. It's so funny, <laughs> and but it's it's definitely like yeah, it's yeah. very soft. It's like if a, a dog put its paw up to you like that. You know what I mean? It just wants to be friends. Yeah, I just want to give him a treat. Yeah. Um, uh, tonight I, I just found this out. I'm hosting tonight, so you're at the stand, and then what a lineup! It's Jessica Curson. Great. Janine Garofalo. Unbelievable. Nikki Glazer. Wow. Pete Lee. Ooh. Jesus, the show. Chris Stefano. Wow. Mark Norman. I'm gay. Hey. <laughs> 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 Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin Hart. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, you guys. I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll do some gay stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was talking um, to this girl out on the road, and she was like, yeah, I just saw this comedian. He was really good, like, but he's gay, but like he wasn't. And I was like, Mark Norman? She's like, yeah. Uh, I'm like, that's so funny. That's uh, like, that's not the thing he wants is his catchphrase, but right. now it's because <laughs> I'm gay. I'm gay. <laughs> yeah. Gotta yeah, try it. You know, it's fun. I'm gay. Oh, boy. It's you fun. Are. You are gay, dude. I'm not gay. You just yeah. said it. No, that's not. You... How long has it been since you've dated a woman? Two years. Gay. That's gay. <laughs> we just said that at the same time. That was the very gay. same moment. That was great. But I think it's fine to be gay. I'm not gay. We I'm accept gay saying, people. We're yeah. just saying about Tim Dillon. You're in too. fucking New York. You couldn't be in a safer place. Oh, no. I mean, if I was gay, this would be the place to be gay. Yeah. Like, I would, I would be fucking at the gay then bars. Then do it, dude. You can't fuck Stop at the gay bars. Stop fucking around. It's Get some. still not allowed. It's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> they just go there for drinks, and then they fuck Like later. people. You know how people have drinks? <laughs> Peace, Chris. Thanks, man. Peace, Ron. Did you get everything all straightened out now today? Uh, waiting for one last thing to lock it up. Was it well worth it that you were in that room? I, I did a lot of uh, texting and emailing and talking to people. Yeah, but Here's those were private. <laughs> you stunk in that room and Vito stunk in this room. That's what I can't figure out. Yeah. You both are just passable in your regular spots. <laughs> and then a disaster when you walk eight feet away from each other. Vito, you coming down to the stand tonight? We'll come down to the stand. I'd love to come down. Yeah, a lot of guys there. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of guys. guys. A lot of handsome dudes. <laughs> Go get yourself some fucking chode. Make okay. this chode night. Just a handful of dick. Mm -hmm. So you really you haven't been laden that long. Yeah, just but, fucking killing it by myself. And, wow. And even when you're with the girl, you said you weren't having sex with her. No, I had sex with my. I lived with her. I had sex. I had sex with women. I had sex with women. So you're a virgin, is what you're saying? No, I'm not a virgin. Four women. Seven. 
Seven. Seven. Seven. Wow. Three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. <laughs> men, men always add numbers. Women always take away numbers. Yeah. My mom's like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. Like, 39? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> 70 something? That is sad when you, like, lie about it, and then they have a reaction to, the like, your lie number was a lot. And you went, ooh, ooh. if you knew the real number, <laughs> you'd be really upset. Yeah. <laughs> and and girls from Long Island never include blowjobs. No. They think that they keep their. I don't. I don't think you should anyway. No. That's well, a different list. Let's take you out to Ron Conkema then, because you'd be happy. <laughs> That's a different list. I don't include those. How many guys have you blown? I've not. <laughs> <laughs> Just said, dude. Why won't you include them? If I get a blowjob, I'm not going to consider that sex. It's just mouth sex. Sex, dude. You just said the word. No, though. but it's not bodily like, fluids. You're counting vaginal intercourse. You're not counting oral. So, so, if you have anal, are you saying you didn't have sex with someone? I mean, there's, I guess, by that standard, I'm gonna, I'm gonna include ass and vaginal, vaginal, anal sex. You can count it, but like hand jobs and blow jobs, no, that's not. And like, not if it's your so, hole. Yeah. So if you're, <laughs> if you're fucking. If you get married, right? Yeah. And your wife blows three guys that day and comes home and you say, what do you do today? Go nothing. <laughs> nothing. Did you have fellas. sex with anyone? No, no, I didn't. Definitely not. <laughs> Same as having lunch for you. Same as if you went out to lunch. If you blow. <laughs> Same as a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, I'm glad you brought that up because no. <laughs> You'd be mad if, uh, if your wife was just making out with dudes at bars and stuff. So I look at making out like a blowjob. I feel uh, like we're about uh, to go into the foot massage uh, it is. scene from Pulp Fiction. Yeah. See Tony Rocky Hart? <laughs> <laughs> you do kind of remind me of Tony so, Rocky let, Let's say this. Would you ever make out with a guy? No, I would not make out with a guy. It depends on the guy. Say, because you think it's sexual. Zac Efron, yeah. He's not going to be with you. You're right. But he has his fucking can... choice of anyone. Yeah, I feel like Zac Efron would just be thinking about himself the whole time he made out. Yeah, yeah. and that would he be with anyone, yeah. you know? anyone. Just use, oh, Zac Efron. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What we could do is blindfold Zac Efron and then have him be with you and go, okay, did you just fuck a sack of potatoes? Or was that a person? <laughs> but he feels up my chest. <laughs> yeah, you to feel potato-y. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, these potatoes seem rotten. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked a rotten sack of potatoes. Can you fresh potatoes? No. Fuck, that would be too hard for you. Well, he's going to have to explain the smell somehow. <laughs> and the dirt. <laughs> and the eyes. <laughs> my eyes adored you. This is terrible. When you fucked me in the gut, my eyes adored you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Vito. I don't know. If I, I don't know a shit about you anymore. I feel like you're a stranger to me now after this fucking conversation. I will um, say this: that uh, in my so since I've been single, Don, yeah. you know Dante Nero, right? Very well, very well. Dante yeah. told me because I was having a hard time getting over my ex. He told me that I had to be in five pussies uh, <laughs> to get over the one. And inside, I, inside, yeah. inside five pussies. So I called him, and he'd be like, he'd be like, "Where are you at?" I'd be like, "Oh, I'm at three, and yeah. but I got a blowjob, so it's four. He's like, "Nope, you're at three. Right. And um, but here's the thing: like the thing that I missed about my ex wasn't just her. Pussy, it was like like she was a shoulder to cry on. So like right, I needed like five shoulders. Right, you needed a person on. to be with. Yeah. Dante Nero once told me to get into the social club. I had to kill a cop. <laughs> I don't know. He's got a lot of rules like that. <laughs> but look, to me, you and Nikki Glaser would be perfect together. But what's the? Why not? We're just friends. But We're, why? You're not attracted to her? Uh, I mean, honestly, I I am attracted to her. But yeah. like when I I don't know when um. It, it's part of our history, like because we didn't speak for eleven years. So yeah. when we first got together to be friends, we got together like, like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna get together. And it feels weird as a guy to say this, but like my wires were so crossed. Like, wait, this person was my enemy. She used to walk into a room, and I'd be like, oh shit, it's her. You didn't um, like her at all for years. Um, I I liked her, and I think I admired her. She hated me, and so mm -hmm. I felt very uncomfortable. Why? Why did she hate you? I broke her heart. Um, I was uh, I was. Like right at the start of when I was dating my now ex-wife, I dated Nikki, uh -huh. and then um, I chose my now ex-wife over Nikki. Mistake. And uh, and then um, for I didn't realize that I broke up with Nikki on her birthday. That's a oh, big. God. That's a no. big. That's fucking awful. Yeah, that's but it's terrible. Pete, can I tell you two two half words? Huh. Rom com. 
rom com. Yeah, yeah, you two are thing. in love. You don't even know it. And can I just say something? Yeah. In a rom com, you know how often like the girl is in radio. Yeah, it's like a thing. Oh, that's like yeah. a thing. Maybe she could ask her listeners what she should do. Yeah, our yeah. listeners all have different diseases, so we can't <laughs> interact with them. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it it, but it's it. Over time, we've just become we've become such best friends. Harry and- met Sally, my friend. <laughs> Fucking New Year's. Oh my God! If New Year's Eve. <gasps> If Pete runs to her, please. If I run to her in a stupid jacket like yeah. Billy Crystal had, like one of those pancake jackets. Yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, I want you to listen to Nikki when she does stand up because mm-hmm. I hear two voices in harmony at the same time. Oh, her voice is really amazing. There's another. I think it's the best voice in like comedy. it's got two tonalities. You're There's saying. two tonalities, and one is raspy that kind of lines up perfectly with the clear part of her voice. And it's stunning. It's like the horn of a Toyota, like okay. how it's harmonious. It's like it's like yes. aggressive, but like, yeah. hey, don't shoot. That's her. That's Nikki. Mm. That's your New Year's Eve wife, is what I'm calling her. <laughs> That's the great name for the movie. <laughs> I hope it doesn't spoil the ending. Yes. And what I want to do, my <laughs> my dream is to get a theater without any chemicals at all, and have Sarah come and introduce this movie. As a true story based. <laughs> and I'll play Pete's downstairs neighbor and I'm bringing curry up all the time. <laughs> oh, Mr. Pete, Mr. Pete, some curry. Some curry, Mr. Pete. <laughs> I used to smoke weed, but then I found curry. I love this movie. Yeah. Same neighbor. <laughs> and right before you're with your New Year's Eve wife. Mm-hmm. Nikki Glazer, you're fucking a sack of potatoes, <laughs> and it turns out to be Vito. Vito, do you have a side card? No, but uh, this is my chance to get one. Yeah, you yeah. know what card you do have, right? Fag card. <laughs> and we accept you for that. You're going to be my good luck, Chuck. But oh, I bang God. you, and then I, and then I <laughs> yeah. finally get to be with yeah. the love of my life. Okay. Only we'll call you Let's Fuck, Chuck. <laughs> 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 oh, I love this, this so newsy good. wife thing. <laughs> the thing is, she's always booked in better rooms than you. That's the oh, that's she... going to be hard to get you in the same place. Oh, she's definitely yeah. her career is amazing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she's like Pete. I want to be with you when I'm playing a the theater. <laughs> All right, that's it. Uh, Pete Lee is in the documentary. I need you to kill. Available on Amazon and iTunes. I saw this film by accident. Not even knowing anything, if there wasn't a trailer with it, and I thought it was hysterical. I thought all you guys were great. Oh, thank you! If, if a million more people can just see it by accident, yes, that's it'll all. Be you, amazing. Well, there wasn't even there wasn't even a trailer with it on the on demand. It just it just yeah. started playing. Yeah, it just started playing out of nowhere. But uh, it's you, Segura, and who was the third? Chad Daniels. Hilarious, amazing. hilarious, and they're in China doing gigs <laughs> for these people, and it's really funny. It's really, really funny stuff. And Pete was much younger. He had a wife with him. I had my wife with me, and we were we were like going through the start of our divorce during yeah. the trip. Um, and so it was it was such a weird like I would never do that now. <laughs> I would never be like, yeah, we're starting our divorce. Let's go to Asia and right. film a documentary. Um, I had I had crazy curly midlife yes, crisis his hair. Really, really curly hair. Yeah, like he was hanging out with Paul Simon. <laughs> yeah. It was great. Uh, PeteLee.net for all of Pete's tour dates. Thank you so much, buddy. It's great to have you in Thank here. you so much for having me. We all love you. We talk about you all the time. Uh, Chris, mm-hmm. anything I need to plug before I'm out of here? Uh, you'll be at the stand with Pete Lee tonight, along with Jessica Kirsten, Janine Garofalo, Nikki Glazer, Chris Stefano, and Mark Norman. Go to thestandnyc.com for tickets. This is just a That's midweek. New- I should be filming this for a fucking Netflix special. Yeah. Right. Let's get Judah and those Chinese students to come <laughs> in and film it. <laughs> Do you know that all those kids that interned for him are missing now? No one knows what happened. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Judah doesn't like to share the money. You know what I mean? <laughs> now that the checks are coming in. It's like good fellas. They're all over town hanging from hooks. All right. That's it. We'll see you again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen. The evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! Yeah.